sponsor, Parati's Quality Meats, located in Cranford, New Jersey, serving customers all over New Jersey for the past 50 years. Coach, just unveiling the Coach's Top 20 rankings for week four right now and just came out. You know, it's all over social media right now. I'm just looking at it. We have three new teams that just came in. Point Burrow moved up to 16. Marlboro moved up to 18. And Brick came back in after a week off back at 19 uh, with there. What do you think? Yeah, the big wins last week. I mean, you're starting to see the 3 0 Panthers start to move up now. 3 0 Bengals are moving in after from 20 up to mm -hmm. 17. And then Marlboro coming, you know, 2 0 after a big win last week, you know, as well. They're, they're jumping into the rankings. Uh, you know, there's a couple others that you're, I'm sure you're going to touch on real quick that made significant jumps this week, which were our two big movers of the week. But it's good to see Barnegat, Point Barrow, and Marlboro, you know, start to get the recognition they deserve, you know, as well as Brick getting back into the top 20. Yeah, I mean, Long Branch moved up four spots, won an impressive game against Frio Barrow. They moved down. Yeah. Lacey moved up three spots, played a real tough, well-coached Milltown North team. They moved up to 10. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, with that. And, yeah, Marlboro Central is real interesting. They're both uh, in a liberty. They're, they're, they're really kind of – heading for a big, big game, and it's probably going to be for the title. Two teams that are really surprising everybody and playing real well right now, to be honest. Yes, yeah, Central Regional, the, the Eagles, that was the big jump of the week. They moved from 19 to 13, jumping up six spots this week. Yeah. Uh, again, the beauty of the conference, you know, the coaches talk. This is all coming from our peers of, of the coaches alumni. Yeah. So this is all votes being lodged by, you know, a, a, an assistant coach or the head coach of a program. So, yeah. Central Regional is getting a lot of respect coming from their peers right now, jumping up six spots. Oh, Coach, we can move this poll to top 25 and still be solid. There's some good teams looking oh. uh, looking to come back inside it right now. But, and again, you know, it's going to be competitive. And three teams that bumped in, uh, very impressed with Marlboro. That, that, and, Cent of course, Central. Central hasn't given up a point. If he keeps that up, yeah. he's not losing a game. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Barnicky moved up to 17. Uh, Point Borough is back in at 16 from, from a couple years being out of it. There's some good football teams yep. from top to bottom, and there's some really good teams that are itching to get back in that, that either left or is moving up the ladder right there. And then you're looking up top. Your top six, top seven stayed the same, and just a couple movement here and there, and things are starting to you know fall into place, but there's still some big games, and the big games we're going to talk about in a couple minutes – that is going to Correct. definitely change the week five coaches top poll coach. So yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. I was going to say the same thing this week's schedule. You're going to definitely see a little movement coming to top 20 to see how teams fare out. But again, we spoke about it earlier. That's why this top 20 is, is so great to be able where last week we had a 12th and 13th ranked team in Lacey and mid North. That was a, obviously we got it right. Mm -hmm where those are two teams neck and neck played with a three-point game. Okay. And there you go at Middletown North is at 14. Now Lacey moves up to 10. That's the way things go. Yeah. Some interesting matchups, Coach, that's going to happen this week and we're going to talk about in a couple. Welcome, everyone, to Week 4, Coach's View from the Sidelines by the Shore Football Report. Coach Holy, once again, thank you for coming on. And I'm Coach Rob Davis, and we have another great talk show to talk about for the next – I want to say two hours, probably. We got some great information for the uh, everybody today. We got Coach Ananucci coming on, 200th career win, Coach. And we got him. He's taking his time off, and he's going to come back on and talk a little Middletown South football. Past, present, and future we're going to talk about. So I'm, I'm real excited about that, Coach. Um, I have a tips for all the players in a short conference that a college coach gave me. And uh, it really makes sense because the bottom line is these players, they want to excel on the field. We all know that. And they want to be looked at. Everybody wants that scholarship where they want to make their all-star team, you know, and all that. And I always tell our kids, they always think so big, be the best player in your house. If you're the best player in your house, be the best player on the street. If you're best on the street, then maybe your neighborhood. And then all of a sudden you're making all county and all that stuff right there. But us coaches, we're human. 
and we all talk. We see positives and we see negatives. Sometimes we don't talk about the negatives to other people, but you know, we see what we see and we get vibes. We get good vibes. We get bad vibes. We're human. And that's what's great about this football game is that the human factor takes effect. And, and I'm I got a little post that I put up and a lot of people have been reposting it up that we'll talk about later. And it's true to form, you know, with these kids and, they got a lot of eyes on them, watching them. They really are. You know, that, that's really so well said, Coach. And I mean, a credit to you. I've known how, how much, as coaches, we all know how well you prepared your kids for the college recruiting aspect, and how many kids you've been blessed to be able to send off to the next level. You know, as well as myself. You know, meeting with the coaches. I mean, I, I, I met with eighty-eight coaches last year to be able. And that list that I, I had a preview of looking at. That's that's almost like a bible for the student athlete. Yeah. It's not about football. It's about life lessons life. and character, most importantly. And that's a tribute what you put together football there. Etiquette. I mean, really, football yep, etiquette. it's going to be a great thing for the kids to look at. Football yep. Coach, you and I as coaches and players, we can't do things that, you know, we can't maybe spit in public where everybody's watching us like somebody else is doing it on the side. We can't maybe interact a different way um, in a negative way and get away with it like we did. We always got a spotlight on us good or bad. Everybody wants to magnify the bad things that we do and we want to minimize the opportunities people uh, can can say bad things about players, coaches, programs, etc. So Listen, uh, how many times we've said it as coaches, high school football is the foremost number one sport in all of high school. We all know that. Yeah. And with the positives come negatives. Everybody likes to be that 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 football player that's got the spotlight on him when he's doing great things. But you got to also know it gets magnified a little bit too when you don't do your job as a with with your character and the way you carry yourself in the classroom yeah. and the way you walk the hallways, the way you're out in public because you're viewed as that special kid that plays the greatest sport in the world, high school football. Coach, when you want to uh, gauge uh, gauge a kid if he's a team player. Watch the kid's reaction when he's 40 yards away when somebody else succeeds. And if he's not getting excited about it, mm -hmm, again, that's something that we want to do. And hopefully uh, when we talk about uh, that post that I put up, I want you, I want all the players to kind of look at it and take it in a positive way and say, if you were that kid that did that last game, maybe – couple of those things, work on that. Be very conscious of celebrating with your teammates. Be very conscious of not being outworked by the ball boy, coach. Don't be outworked by that ball boy, you know? I love seeing those ball boys that wait all day to get on that football field. They're probably fifth graders, fourth graders, and they sprint to that tee and they sprint back. He didn't get, he didn't practice it. It comes right here because he wants yeah. to do it. There one, of the, one of the greatest, one of the greatest lessons I learned from my former head coach, Dino Mangiro, was – a great line. Character is defined is what you're doing when nobody else is watching. You're right. That's when you know when you got great character. You're absolutely right. Very, very true with that, Coach. And you are wherever you are, you're going to be the same way, you know, on game day when, when it's needed. Fourth and three, your character comes into effect real quick. Amen. Because some Amen. people already have a built-in excuse or pointing a finger before they even snap the gosh darn blood. Amen. Go on, Coach. So I have to talk about the way we're looking so spiffy tonight. Usually we're all Hawaiian and beached up looking as good as I can't compete with you with the amount of, you know, good looking Hawaiian church. Yeah. But we both also know on the secondary part of high school football coaching and what we do, we also have secondary jobs inside the high school. So I know it's yeah. that time of year where it's back to school nights and we're starting to get into that grind of what's going on. So that's why we're dressed the way we're dressed. Yeah, simple. Back to school night. I'll just tell my parents here, just watch our TV show tomorrow, <laughs> you know, and you'll, you'll have, you'll know who I am. Real soon with that. Coach, ratings. I'll tell you right now, ratings right now are going off the roof. And, um, you know, without saying numbers and all that, our ratings are what people are saying is probably the to top high school football talk show in South Jersey and maybe maybe the all of New Jersey. We're getting a lot, a lot of positive feedback, and, and, and it's awesome. It really is. Listen, and, we're football coaches. We always go by analytics. Numbers don't lie. And when I saw numbers of how many hits that we're now getting yeah. on YouTube by just basically going word of mouth right now, totally. because we're in the beginning state and credit to you of, of building this short football report of what we're at now, but the way to see the growth compared to other type of talk shows or, or, or other yeah. media outlets, yeah. this is the number one being viewed media report for short conference football. 
Coach, we definitely have the attention of the short conference football community. We really do. Every coach has taken ownership in the shortfootballreport.com. And once again, I want to thank them for the stuff that the head football coaches do or delegate to their assistants that's being provided to the short conference community. Statistics after every game, they're giving it to you. It's never been done before. We have statistical leaders that are posted every Thursday because we have everybody's statistics that ever touched the ball offensively, defensively with that. Um, they vote on the coach's top 20. Yeah. Every yes, football program gets one vote. And, Coach, between you and I, after 12, 14 votes, it, it really is solid. We're getting 20 to 30. This week we got 24 solid, and I, I'm excited to showcase this week's coach's top 20. And also the divisional players of the week's. Coaches are calling me up or texting me and or, or emailing me stuff and trying to get their kids so much exposure, which is greatly appreciated by my end and also the players end, and most importantly, the families too. So they do a lot of stuff outside of just those Friday night football games to just keep promoting the game of football. They really do. And that's there what was the comment that I got, Coach, uh, again, from what this has started and what it's becoming is they truly feel, and I'm talking about the coaches now, this is their talk show. This is their website. Yeah. It's all encompassing right now. Yeah. It's everybody listening, everybody involved, them having a voice, them having an opinion, and it's all being put together. You know, so yeah. I, I'm super, super excited where this is going to grow to. Coach, I and, and again, talking with a lot of the, the football coaches out there, we're going to have other topics that we're going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks. We're going to talk about pods. We're going to talk about divisions and how they're yeah. made and all that and what we're thinking and what our coaches yeah. are thinking, because I'm going yeah. to be taking a poll with them. And then we're going to we're going to talk about the results of that stuff. And maybe, you know, do we want to go and keep doing these new divisions or do we want to go back to those traditional type of divisions to me? Traditional is, um, you know, when you grow up knowing that you're always playing these these teams. It's something to look forward to, and, and it gets to gauge how your program's doing instead of watering it down or putting people in different spots. But that's going to be the coaches. We're going to talk about that, too. Again, so. not to beat a dead horse, but I think that's what you and I bring to the table because we, we're in the dance. We've been to the dance. We, 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 we've been on that view from the sidelines of what it's like. So to be able to forget, project our view, that's the other coach's view. It's not just an outside source of media telling, well, this is what this this is what we think. No, this is what the coach's thoughts and yeah. feelings are about this. And this is where we're at. That's awesome. You know what's great about the coach's top 20? It's not me. It's not you. It's not, nope. They're voting. Peers. We're just presenting it on Peers. this platform. So yep. like you said, we are the voice for yep. them to to get it out. And it's the coach's top 20. It's yep. not it's not reporters picking yep. it, three people picking their teams and all that. It's coaches that know other their own program and other people. And the way they vote, I really respect it. They're you would think that they would say, Oh, let's just vote for us and that. Yeah. They really are doing an yep. outstanding job and doing it the right way. They There's really no are. greater reward than when your own peers from the alumni what we're so blessed to be a part of give you that opinion. You know, there's mm -hmm. no greater reward. Awesome. They're awesome with that. Coach, speaking of weekly games, I, I, I want to, I don't know if it's bragging or telling the truth, but maybe it's a little mix of both. I'm in first place, man. I'm in first place. Me, oh. me, me. <laughs> I lost the bet. I was the over under was under five minutes. Oh I was God! <laughs> did I? Did I? I don't know if I told you. Me, me, me. <laughs> Forty two and twelve, man. Forty two and twelve. Seventeen and two last week, coach. Uh, I, I don't know. I know what's going to happen before it even happens. And you know what? Uh, uh, I, I finally got something right. My wife would never believe it because she thinks I'm wrong all the time. And that's that. But we're getting really t uh, good, our whole staff, uh, with picking the, the football games. I agree. 80 something, 80 plus percent um, yep. accuracy. We're doing a really nice job. We're having fun with it. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're getting a little ribbon from our, our peers out there. Oh, you're picking this guy over there. And I get people calling me or texting me saying, three out of four, thanks for the bulletin board. But you know what? We're having fun with it. We respect all the coaches. And yep, um, I agree. And, and that's that. So with that coach, and again, let's echo the same thing that we say every week. This talk show is about 42, 42 football programs. 
and 42 football programs get talked about on this show. We you just don't talk mouth. about the top games of the week. Who are you and I to say who's a top game? Let me tell you why. Anytime you strap on the helmet and tie the shoelaces, that's a big God darn game. And we talk about every single team on this show. Maybe not the same length, but you are mentioned on here and, and you deserve it. Uh, as long as you're in the short conference, we will talk about that all the time. And that's one thing that we are very conscious about, Coach. Well, a head coach that I'll, that I'll, I'll keep nameless texting me he goes, I can't believe you and Coach Davis go on for about an hour and a half talking about the games, the upcoming games, and what's going on. He goes, that's a long time. I go, we're talking about everyone. That was my text back. Yeah. Because that's exactly right. We're, it's a lot easier to to, 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 to parry down your, your podcast or your, or your talk show yeah. down to 45 minutes where you're only going to talk about 10 teams. Yeah. We're talking about you. If you're part of the short conference – football, which is the greatest conference in the state of New Jersey, yeah. you're going to get talked about on the short football report. Really? That's what it's all about. Yeah, we got short conference football programs backs, and I know they got ours. This is a great situation. I love it. It's the next best thing from being on the sidelines. It's, it's, it's really not the same. My it's wife, not as good, but it's close. My wife tried to pull one the other Friday. She goes, how about Friday we sit down and watch a movie? She knows it's high school football. <laughs> She knows I wait all this time for high school football. This is the first year I'm not coaching or playing in 30-something years, and she wants to watch a Lifetime movie? Oh, come on. If you could just think of the words I said there, if there was an official there, he would have threw a 15-yard penalty three times on me and injected me. But there's no way I'm sitting home. And, you know, listen, we're, we're making the best out of it. You know, you're still coaching um, at, at Matter Day at, on the JV level. And uh, I'm sitting home. And if I didn't do this, I, it, this would be so tough uh, yeah. getting through a year and all that. But I had to do it. I had to sit out a year. I promised my wife and my doctor. Um, but I'm fine. I, I got cleared. I'm good. And it, I'm and so getting so antsy, Coach. I want to be on that field. I'm so jealous of every football coach out there. Uh, um, they got the greatest jobs in the world. And, and, and they know it. And I don't have to remind them. They know yeah. it. Just the bond that they have with – all the athletes, good or bad. I miss the worst scenarios as a coach because you just miss it. Those phone calls maybe where you got to justify certain things or, or whatever. My phone doesn't ring at all unless my daughter's asking me uh, what we're eating for dinner right now. So Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, it, it's a blessing this year because I'm able – I'm blessed to have a senior high school where I can take the year off to do college visits. I don't have yeah. as much on my place. But, but I'll tell you, when I, when I saw – the video Friday night of Coach Antonucci leading that team down that walkway, getting pumped up and jumping and running down, leading that team, or the Saturday game I saw with a team running onto the field. That's uh, that's where it starts to hit you in the gut a little bit. That That's where coaches do the passion that we have that makes you feel young. Makes yeah. you feel young. That's the, that's the game. It's all unscripted, too. That's what's great yep. about it's, football. It comes from the heart. Comes, comes from the heart. from the heart. All emotions. And when yep. emotions are rising – I just love watching the teams yep. that can control it to a point yep. because you also don't want to get fatigued. There's so much strategic sure. stuff with football. Too yep. much emotion could drain you out later on. Absolutely. You got to control it. Yep. You, you really do coach. Um, it's that the other things we're going to talk about is the recap of last week's games. And we're going to talk about the breakdown of this week's games. And of course, like you said before, coach Ananucci career milestone, 200 already and he's only i think 50 51 and we yeah, just had coach I played Rus against him in high school he's right there yeah we just had coach rusillo that got his um 300th yeah so a lot of exciting times in the short conference and you know it's not just great for him it's great for the community it's great, it's great for, for the, the short conference, conference. Yep. knock on wood it really is so we yep. got a great lineup coach and and what i want to do right now is we're going to switch over and we're going to show you that post that I put up to give all the players some tips on, Amazing. on yep. what people are looking at that could really enhance your recruiting or maybe help you out. And maybe in those all-star meetings when it's between this guy and this guy and coaches are there and, and we remember a negative thing and that guy remembers, Oh no, don't you remember? He picked that kid up when that kid scored and did all that stuff. So the human factor goes a lot and sometimes pushes you one way or the other with that. So let's look at that right now. Coach, coach here's a game plan for winning for the, uh, for the young student athletes out there. And sometimes 
Absolutely. We, sometimes we need reminders to make sure that it helps us later on in later in life or later in the season or when you need it, when you want to cash in, you really want to cash in. So I posted this on my Twitter. I got this from a college coach. He said, pass this around. And it made sense because you and I know mm -hmm. that we've seen a kid that either did this or didn't do this. And it could yeah. justify in your head a positive or negative about a kid. So let's just go right down, yeah. coach, and talk briefly about it. All right. Just tips for players when being watched at a football game by college coaches, your opponents, football coaches, and media. And I say media because they're the ones picking all-star teams. They don't know yes. you anything yes. more than a Friday night. <coughs> That's right. Right? All, All right. They Here see. We... All they see. Here we go. Celebrate touchdowns with your teammates. Is that a bad thing, Coach? To be happy for your team that somebody other than you scored a touchdown. I think that's incredible. I think that's incredible. It, it emphasizes we, not me, and I, you know, and you, not I. That's nope. what the most important thing is about. It's a team Team, team. Yeah. Don't interact with the stands during the game. And, Coach, that is a pet peeve of mine. The oh, game's in front no of you, not behind you. You have distractions. You have the band. You have people yelling. You have people giving um, advice from the stands, maybe telling them what to do other than yeah. other things. Yeah. Do not. If they, uh, My thing is, is I tell the players, if you want to be in the stands, then go in the stands. And that's real yeah. simple. But there's nothing worse than football players turning their backs to the field and they're looking in the stands and all that body language. And we'll talk about that later is very, very big with that. So don't interact with the stands. They're there. You want to ignore that feed off it. And that's that coach, right? I couldn't agree with you more. All right. Now when your offense and defensive unit comes off the field, find your coach or coaches. They shouldn't have to look for you. They might be looking somewhere else. When you get off the field, go right to your position coach to get at some type of constructive criticism or a tip that will help you prepare for the next play next time you go in there. Don't just go get a drink of water or nothing. When you have idle talks and your coach is there and you're there, you're not getting any better. You're not. Coach, coach. as a, one of my biggest pet peeves as a defensive coordinator, you might only get – that one or two down to be able to make the adjustment because the offense turns over the ball. Yeah. If I have to waste my time to have to find to get you over to a bench to be able to go over the schematic of what we're trying to do or what went wrong, and now we have to flip the script because something bad happened on offense mm -hmm. because I wasted that time trying to find you, yeah. you just lost that opportunity. You're right. Play and win each rep with class. Be a class on and off the field. There's nothing wrong with that. Give the football to the official after a play. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, helping a guy off, off, off the ground, and all that. Back in the olden days, you don't do that stuff. But nowadays, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just playing the game of class. There's a set of rules, play by the rules, play as hard as you could to the, to the whistle blows. But anything after that is, is some type of um, unnecessary stuff. Would you agree? That might be, that might be one of the most important uh, comments you have right there, because if nothing emphasizes the word character, that's what emphasizes character right there. Right. Helmets. Can't stand what helmets uh -huh. are used for. They're not a chair. They're not uh -huh. to wave around. It's not an object to throw at people. Have your helmet on or in your hand. Mm -hmm. You should never have to pick it up off the ground. Or don't even leave it on the bench because somebody else takes it. You have to go in the field, and now you don't have it. It's a distraction because the bottom line is you didn't have possession of your helmet. Your helmet is sacred, Coach. Amen. I mean, the way I always looked at it is football is a special sport. Not everyone can do it. That is part of your body. Your helmet is part of your body. Coach, That's disrespectful yep. to the sport itself to ever see a helmet sitting on the ground. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. Body language. No defeated body language. I did not like, and I made sure my coaches, when they talk to me, I don't like the Italians when they move their hands, all right? Because everybody thinks that we're having some type of agitated conversation, but yet we're just talking like Italians. So I always tell our coaches, keep their hands below their waist because I was so conscious of body language. Players, okay, you know what body language. You could just look at it and see if that they're happy, excited, or they're gesturing to some other person out there or trying to make their point across. That's not positive. A, a, 
body language that's negative is just f- other people feed off it. And it's not good. It's just not good. Co- Coach Holtz was, was famous for a quote, your body language speaks such a higher volume than your mouth could ever say. Yeah. Yep. And that's so true. It's so, so true. And sometimes you don't have to say something to get a 15 yard on sportsman like it could be your body language and how you're showing up those officials yes, sir. and you can't yes, do sir. don't argue with your coach without i mean it should, it's it's just like it's just like don't argue with your parent don't argue with just don't argue with your coach i mean nowadays nowadays you know everybody has an answer for everything when it's when 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 things are going well it's yes sir no sir when things are not going well they have the answer well madden yep. football <laughs> doesn't educate people to give you the right stuff. Listen to your coach. All right. Just listen to your coach. Bottom line is don't disrespect your coach. And moving forward, don't argue with your boss. This is all, this is all lessons learned in life. Yeah. You're not going to argue with your boss when you're at work, you yeah. do your job, just yeah. do your job. Chase the ball on a turnover balls on the ground. You're on the ground. All right. Just that's yours. Chase the ball, go hundred percent to the whistles blown. That's your job. You do that nine out of ten times, you're going to get the ball more times than not, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every rep compete without them. Go 100%. Absolutely. 100%. Don't take a playoff. And the last one, I love it. I love it. Don't let ball boys outwork you. And the reason why I, I say that is because you never have to tell a ball boy, hey, go out there and I want you to hustle. He's out there because he's – 100 miles an hour. 100. Out. Yeah, 100 miles an hour. You know, it's great. And that's great because everybody feeds off of one person and next. It's always great when that ball boy sets the tone. Or is maybe it's not good that the ball yeah. boy sets the tone, but somebody's setting the tone, and that's all that matters, Coach. Use these tips, all you football players out there, and make sure that it's done in a positive way. Be conscious of all this. The bottom line is do the right stuff 24-7. And you're going to make a name for yourself in a positive way. And a tribute to you, Coach, because every one of these things, and we know as as men now that have grown up and created lives for ourselves with family and with jobs, these are all life lessons that you're going to take forward into your working career as you move forward as men. That's why this is the greatest sport. Using those type of mission statements right there, you're going to carry forward to be a success in life, not just in football. Well said. Okay, now we're going to recap last week's football games in week three, Coach. Very interesting. And identities of football teams are starting to come out. You know, you get your first game under your belt, the second one, and now the third one's kind of true. Statistics are starting to get a little more solid with their yards given up per game or yards they're getting as a team. And, you know, injuries are starting to seek in, and some people are kind of skirting out of getting injuries. And, you know, some guys are surprising each other and some guys are not doing as well. And we, that's what makes week four even more important, Coach, more important. I, I agree. That's why they never play the games on papers. Some teams are starting to stretch their legs and starting to really starting to pull away from the fact that that's going to be a team that's going to make some noise this year. And then there's some teams that are out. There were some upsets that took place this week as well that you can yeah. see that they got coached up from the following week. Turned around and turned their, turned their season around almost. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. The season's not over for anybody because we, no pr- we got some pretty good 0-2 teams out there that um, yep. are going to bounce back, I think, this week. Too. Yes, sir. So, Coach, let's do it right now. Let's talk about every one of the games, starting with Red Bank versus JFK. And congratulations to Coach congratulations, Fallon. Congratulations, Coach Fallon. One of our biggest fans out there that watches. Yes, sir. You know, Hall of Fame coach now at Red Bank, his first year at Red Bank, got his first, first win. Middle linebacker Sian Sierra uh, had an outstanding game Huge defensively. Game. He really did, and um, they're doing. You know, that's a great win for 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 F- Coach Fallon because that first win is very crucial. Uh, you can't get your second win without your first one, and winning with a, a new group of guys in a yeah. new school for him is just as important than it was when he was with the state championship team at yeah. Rumson. You know that. It, so you know, It shows those young players that they have over with the Buccaneers, you know, starting the season off on two, but they were in games early, but you know, the youth got to them, but now they got that win under their belt. Now you start to buy into it a little bit more. Hey, we can accomplish this. And again, you and I both know, we always love when a short conference team goes out of conference and beats up on another team. 
So congratulations to the Buccaneers and Coach Fallon. And many, many wins in the future, Coach Fallon. Yes, nice sir. job. Good. Now, this is an upset. And it was an upset because I was crying at my house because this was one of the games they got wrong, Coach. I, myself included. We all did. Um, Tom Driver South beat Brick Memorial. And is it fair to say upset after and only it's week three? But we are right now because who knows? So, and it's an a, and it's an a south and it's an a south route rivalry. So. Tom Driver South came in with, with some injuries. They had their quarterback Jimmy Alexander, sophomore, had to come yeah. in and start. And let me tell you what defense have you got? Uh, sophomore D- division player of the week in his in his division, and yeah. what a game he was four of six, 102 yards through a 61 yard touchdown to Gavin Migliori that yeah. that that helped defeat a Brick Memorial team that is a. Um, you know, on the rise with Coach Curry and and, and Connor Dietz. And, Connor Dietz, a quarterback. Yep. It, it comes down to the conversion. Both teams scored the same amount of touchdowns. How many times do you say with special teams during practice, this is going to make or break it? And um, 14, 12, you go in a scrimmage, you do this in a scrimmage, you say, how'd it go? Two to two. Yeah, right? that's right. That's right. Yes. Two yes. to two. So Tom Driver South, after losing the week before to Tom Driver East, 27 to 7, um, comes back and beats Brook Memorial 14 12. Don't try and understand the rationale of what's going to happen in the short conference because there's so much parity here, guys. Yeah. But 14 to 12, big win. Uh, Gavin Migliori had the catch with 335 left in the game with that young, upcoming sophomore quarterback, Jimmy Alexander. I think it's going to be real hard to take him out of the lineup. When you're a sophomore and now you come in a game and, and help them win off of a big loss, congratulations to Coach Sig on bouncing back with a nice win there. Number four, Colts Neck won very impressive versus a Matawan team that's very dangerous, and you know that, Coach. And yes, young. Sir. And they're young. And and Coach Coach Graber, the head coach at Matawan, he knows that they're going to be, you know, taking things with stride. And I know you want to win right now, but they're young. They got freshmen and sophomores across the board, talented, may I add, too, but they came across a team that was pretty good in Colts Neck. Yeah, Colts Neck is Colts Neck. They're going to put their hand on the ground. They are going to attempt, and they are going to succeed in running the football. They ran for 324 yards. They averaged 13 yards per carry. Um, Tommy Fallon, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. You think? uh, I mean – he had runs of 69, 66, and 70-yard touchdown runs. I mean, Colts Neck is really starting to move along that they are going to be an absolute power team. Physical. Physical. And I told yeah. – On yeah. both sides of the ball. Yeah. And, and when when their head fo- football coach came on our show in the summer, I told him I wanted to come to their inside drill because mm-hmm. they got those linemen, those running backs – those oh, linebackers great, are physical. It's a great nine on seven, yep. Holy yep. smokes, Tommy Fallon, the quarterback, running those yards and separating from the defenders, and he's a big kid too, coach. Reminds yep. me of like a Tim Tebow type guy. So the number four Colts neck is rolling, um, 33-0 versus Matawan. in the national division. Pinelands comes up first game beats Lakewood eighteen six under the lights at Lakewood. So. Very, it was a, a lot of intensity, a great atmosphere at Lakewood with the lights. They had the um, what do you call those uh, movable lights that came the in? Portable lights, yep, yep, yep. Ray, Ray Allen, the junior quarterback, had a great game 145 yards rushing, three touchdowns. That's a sign of a leader, right there. And yep. um, their, their running back, Liam Villinger, a sophomore, had over a hundred and something yards. Um, and they got they they got their young team Pine Lance, and that was a big win for them to bounce back um, and get that W against the Lakewood team. That's dangerous. It really is dangerous. Coach. Yep. It's a battle of the two group threes in that national division. Yeah. Pine Lance took a big win right there. That was, yep. a, that was a big win. Yep. Now Monmouth took another step in the right direction with a convincing 34-7 win versus a Kingsburg team that many people thought were the front was runner to win this division. To win this division, and and you know and. Rightfully so. They got some. They got tradition. They had a lot of people that believe in them. Yeah. Um, you know, graduation, a couple of injuries here or there. Um, you're a different team. You're especially at that level right there. But Anthony Jen, nine to 16, 205 yards. That junior quarterback is looking pretty good. And Julian Jones, that Julian junior Jones. running back, 
Wow. Um, yeah. Four touchdowns. He's a special player. Special. Offensively, defensively, just all over the place. This is a very talented junior class Mammoth has. I remember when they played us um, when they were freshmen when, when mm-hmm. I was at Barnicket, and I knew they were very special then. Really? And here they are right here. Yeah. So this is a, a team Coach Wendell was very excited about, and he's got them, and, got, and, they're, and they're predominantly juniors. But that is a huge win and a step in the right direction for a national division championship. Yeah, I- Undefeated in the national division right now, so Mom is setting himself up yeah. for a good run here. Coach, yep. they they were real close to beating Manchester too, so they're yes, they're, they were. they're a play away from being three and zero. Look for yep. them, Coach Keyport, one of the hottest teams right now, uh, and, and not just for Group One, but out there played a Point Beach team that came off a very big win against Lakewood and won forty five twenty six, and um, DJ Thompson, is there anything he can't do? Uh, I, I was at the, this was the game I was at on Saturday, and to see how fast DJ Thompson has gotten from last year to this year, and I saw him live last right. year as well. He when when Coach um, Coach Glesman was on last year, he made a comment about you know him being clocked at a four four at one of the one of the camps. Right. I saw it live on his kickoff return. He has legit four four speed in a six foot five frame. I was very um, Keyport is a dangerous team. Coach, he runs a 4-4-40. I run a 4-4 10-yard dash. So there's that. All right? But that kid right there, he's six foot four, And, um, you know, he's a college-recruited type of kid. Great, great character. Love the way he plays the game. He fits those checklists of things. Um, but he's he's scoring touchdowns as a uh, – he's leading to shore and receiving yardage, kick returns, yep. punt returns. Interceptions. Interceptions. Coach, yep. he, he's up for player of the year. And, it, and it's not just him. I mean, Coach glesman has got it going on right now. I mean, he's got he's rushing the ball well with the sophomore Nasir Treadwell, who had a great game he again. Did. He did. You know, the quarter, you know, he ripped off a 50 yard touchdown run. Then you also have the quarterback George Mitchell that yeah. came out for the team. You know, this is the first time since 2009, you know, the keyboard's three and and that is a big tradition laid in town where they believe in that football program. That's, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how this national division plays out. And having a young coach like Coach Glesman just feeding off the uh, excitement. That's, yep, I there's, agree. There's some exciting times in the future with Keyport. Maybe Keyport Monmouth making a head-on collision yeah, yeah, pretty soon, yeah. Coach, pretty soon. Yep. But we're going to talk about that another week with that. Great. Now, jumping over to the Patriot division, Another hot team, Shore Regional. Shore Regional. Playing, played Manchester, 21-8. Jamie Mizako, if there is one of the hottest football players out there right now, it's him. Two Every weeks in week. a row, over 200 yards. Um, he's a quarterback, plays running back. He's getting the football wherever he's at. He's the middle linebacker. He was second-team All-Shore last year. Coach Kyes does an exceptional job every year, and this year is probably one of his greatest ones because he took a young team, and now they're getting better each game, and now they're playing a tough game this week against Barnicket in the key. Just think of that stat you just said, Coach. As a quarterback, he had over 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns, and that's where you can see where Shure's really starting to evolve. I mean, from the basic win team that they were for so many years that we both know, now it's being incorporated so much to how they're moving forward you know, into where progressive is an offense. I mean, the quarterback run for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. That's dangerous. Coach, they played against Savon Myers, one of the top – it was a second-team All-Shore last year and has some outstanding perimeter guys. Yeah. And they yeah. did a nice job stifling him. Had a couple key interceptions in the red zone. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. Just a reminder, we have the sign-in sheet for tonight in the main office. Just by. We're getting interrupted here. <laughs> I'll edit that out. But very big win for Coach Kaz uh, yep. versus, versus Manchester right there. Point Borough went on, is keeping it rolling, 3-0. and They just beat Asbury Park, 42-14. to And Coach Stobbs got them going, a real young football team. And we're saying that a lot about a lot of teams, but they truly are. They got a bunch of key sophomores, Oliphant, Davison, Croce, um, among, amongst others. Siliento, their wing back, is playing great on both offense and defense, but the guy who's got the ball in his hands, Charlie Vitale, is playing as good as any quarterback that Point Burrow has had uh, that I that I, I can recall. And they beat a very talented Asbury Park team by 28 on the road, on the road. Yeah, I don't mind saying it. In my opinion, 
Point Borough might be the most underrated team right now in the short conference of what they're doing right now. Well, so we'll get there with the top 20. We'll, we'll get to it. Well, you might have yeah. to erase the underrated a little bit right there yeah. when you see a little yes, bit. Exactly. I just caught myself exactly, but Point Borough is a great – I mean, it's really great to see what's going on there right now. Yeah, Barnegat's off to a 3-0 start. Uh, coach Covine, yeah. first-year coach, he replaced me. He's doing a great job. Jojo Bivens. Jojo Bivens, 26-0 beat Jackson Liberty. Jojo Bivens, they didn't have to ride him too much in this game. He only had, yep. and I'm saying this, only had, I think, 104 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, yep. But defensively, they did real well. With Shaquith Gordon, remember that name, Shaquith Gordon, the junior. He's one of the most um, electrifying defensive backs out there in the short conference. F fantastic. And he's making plays like I knew he would. Um, mm -hmm. So they're going to be tough, Coach, going down. They have a key matchup with Shore, which we'll talk about later on uh, yes, next sir. week. So congratulations, Coach Govin and the Barnick and Bengals for another uh, great win and 3-0. and Liberty Division, Central Regional, Freel Township. <coughs> God, I mean, I'm going to – they have not given up one point yet, Coach Pitch. That's, that's my note right here that we were going to talk about. The, yep. I mean, 104 points, zero points against – uh, the acquisition, getting Coach Papalia as the offensive coordinator and installing a powerful, time-consuming ground attack that he's done with Chase Gumfrey, who's leading the short conference in rushing with uh, 699 yards and 10 touchdowns um, and defensively not giving him a point. Boy, it's, it's working. It's working right Listen, now, Coach. In, in the world of fantasy football, if you had Chase Gumfrey this week, you won. Yeah. For Fred, him at 304 yards rushing and five touchdowns. Yeah. That's an amazing job right there. And but I can't say enough as a defensive guy personally, when you're not letting up any points, listen, you have a really good shot of winning. So post three shutouts, yeah. I don't care who you're playing. Central Regional has it rolling right now. Yeah, I'm going to give you another name. Again, the defensive guys really don't get mentioned a lot unless they make turnovers or whatever. All right, Anthony Musso, 10 tackles, two pass breakups. Three quarterback hurries. He is the leader of that football team. That's a stud. He is. Yep. Stud ain't the word, Coach. Stud ain't the word. And yep. he's, a, he's a leader. He's a leader. He won me over watching a couple games of him last year, and he's doing yep. the same thing this year. So congratulations, Coach Pigeon and the Golden Eagles, 3-0 and out on a great start. Marlboro, 32-13. Marlboro, talk about underrated. Good bounce back win. 2-0. Uh, Marlboro came back, came um, to win that game, and – Yes. Uh, Zach Mendez, AJ Schwartz, Ryan Mendez. They got mm -hmm. Matt Cassidy, a sophomore. They got some household names that people are going to know about. They play hard. Their line is physical and they're excited. And and most importantly, they're two and zero. And I don't think yes, they've sir. been. I don't think they've been two and zero for a long, yep. long time, coach. They really haven't. So that's scary when a team who hasn't been two and zero for a long time and they're looking forward and they're just as excited going to week four than they were in preseason. It's a great job by Coach Degato. Really job. Yes, sir. Look for Neptune to get better, Coach. I'm telling you, Neptune's going to get better, and they're going to be a team that's going to knock off somebody that they weren't expecting. But I'm putting it out. They're going to make a big win sometime during this year just because they had a new coach late in the year. They have some pretty good athletes, and they got some good guys in the trenches. They really do. So Neptune's yep. a team that you don't want to play later on in the year. That you don't. Coach, Independence Division, Brick. And this is Brick football this year. We're going to win in the trenches. They're going to win on the ground, on the yep. ground play good, de good solid defense. 12-7 ver uh, versus Howell, Coach. Um, they got one of the best linemen, Darren Newcomb, in the game right now. He is. And I just wanted to look. Go ahead, Coach. I agree with you on, on, on Newcomb. He, he is regarded as one of the best on the ground. But most importantly, I mean – Brick is going to run the ball. Their offensive line is aggressive. They're physical. But defensively, to hold that air raid offense that mm -hmm. they have at Howell, the seven points, it's a great job on the defensive side as well with Brick. Yeah. Brick's averaging 176 yards defensively uh, per game. Outstanding. Yeah. And that's Coach Lenny Zidane was playing. Yeah. Real tough Give football to where, where it counts. And, and Brick's going to be a tough, tough out for anybody during this year. Good job. And look for Coach Hill to keep improving with that team and getting better and better and better. Again, being a first year uh, with, the, with the program, it just – you don't know when, but when they turn the switch, it's I just agree. in cruise control. It really is. Lacey, Coach, I went to the Lacey game Friday. 
uh, versus Middletown North. I can't believe I'm saying that. Lacey, Friday, and I missed a Bornegat game. <laughs> I, Coach, that was the first game that ever I never was at uh, yeah. the, at Bornegat. And um, it was tough for me, but it was good to be with Lacey and Lou Versillo. Lou Versillo took care of me. He's got the Taj Mahal. He's got um, – he built a press box, and it's second to none. It's probably the biggest and the best one out there. It was awesome. He took care of me, and boy, did I see good football. Lacey was down 26-14 uh, midway in the third quarter and stuck to their game plan, led by Noah Bernardi. Had a great game. Noah's one of the best. He's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the short conference. Three-year starter. Coach, I was so impressed with his quick twitch throwing the, the bubble screen to Mike Abode. Mike Abode is a fit. Is a 190-pound wide receiver, fleet-footed, runs jet sweeps, two touchdowns on jet sweeps, physical kid, gamer, um, just good football. Mike, Andrew Topia, 61-yard touchdown pass with Noah Brunetti. That really changed the momentum. John Dodaro and Scott Stevens on defense are as physical as anybody, Coach, in the short conference. They are. Yeah, but I don't this forget- is one of the games of the week, and obviously – you know, with the coaches top 20 picking them, Lacey coming in at 13, Milltown North at 12, and the game turns out to be a three-point game. That shows you the parity of how close we're ranking these teams. Yeah. I mean, you know, with, with, with Giannone at quarterback and Brian Haddo at running back, Got what it. they have going on there, Middletown North is a very good football team, and it's exactly yeah. how it played out. Two great football programs going against each other, coming down to a three-point game. Coach, Milltown North could have, would have, should have won that game, and Coach Bush with his schemes – had right calls, uh, keeping them off balance, just came down to a turnover, didn't convert in a fourth down. All of a sudden, you, you lost the game to la- a lacy football team that's playing really good football right now. So, yep. I mean, both teams are going to be making uh, a big splash uh, I agree with in the U.S. season. Yep. Um, the Freedom Division, St. John Vianney got on the winning side, 43 nothing against Tom Dravis, who, who won very impressively the week before, Coach. Yeah. And this is what we talked about last week as a guy in prelude, how many good 0-2 teams there were. St. John Vianney was sitting at 0-2, and they come back this following week and put 43 points up and pitch a shutout against the Tom Jerry's team that had a great game the week before. Again, I mean, the, the, the way the parity of the way yeah. the teams are matching up, I mean. Joey Abarno at so. linebacker had a great, great game. Peter Pizzullo. One of the one of the tough guy running backs. Um, they still haven't unleashed Rosado at quarterback yet, but we all know that he's got yeah, it. He's, Kyle he's Ferris, the wide receiver, really good dynamic football player. They got all the pieces to really make a really big run. Uh, they yeah. just needed to get that first win. Lost two close games, coach. Really two yeah. close games. Um, yep. But that's a team you don't want to play with. You don't want to mess with them right now because yep. I think they're going to go on a little bit of a roll right I now for John Vianney. I really think so. So good, good yep. win by the Lancers. Manisquan, number 11, Manisquan, 38-7, beat Ocean. Um, <coughs> that was a good good football team, Ocean. Again, Ocean's tough luck with a lot of losses close. Yes. Manisquan's rolling. New offensive coordinator, Coach Sella, is doing a really Coach nice Sella. job for Coach Price. Coach Price said, here's the keys. Go take it. Here's the quarterback. Go do it. Right and they're Patton. doing it right now. Patton is having a great first couple games. He really is. Um, thrown for 474 yards, seven touchdowns, one interception. He's thrown 79% in this RPO offense. Outstanding connection those two are having. The OC, and Coach Sella, and Coach Patton. He's got some receivers. Kozlowski, um, you know, they got some good got pentagraphs. Uh, yeah, 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 they got some dudes. I like Jameer Howard a lot. Um, they, they got some guys. And, again, Daniel Highland with another touchdown catch. Good football team, good program that's playing high, um, you know, yeah. playing good high offense right now to go with a stingy defense. It sounds like – Yeah, uh, this Constitution like- division is starting to shape up a little bit. Manisquan's sitting at 2-0 and right now in this division. So, Manisquan's going to be a dangerous – again – Number eleven team in our you know last week in our in our, our yeah. coaches top twenty poll, Squan is Squan is a different team, but they're the same type of team. They have the Squan pride, the Squan culture, but now with Coach Sella with offense, they're bringing a lot of different intangibles that teams have not seen with Matt Squan in years past. So Coach, it's gonna be interesting yeah. to see how this division plays out with them. Number two versus number ten. Number two RBC just beat Rarity. Number 10, 49-7. 
Um, RBC proved to be a little too much for them. Raritan was a little banged up. Alex Brown, another big game, throwing a nice 68-yard touchdown pass to Nair Raymond. Um, Sabino Portella, another big game offensively, defensively. They're just imposing their will, and they're doing a really nice job with different guys making plays. They're averaging like eight, eight and a half yards of rush, uh, yeah. RBC as a team. That's pretty scary what they're doing. They got it going right now. They really There's do. There's so many different weapons going on with RBC, obviously with Alex, a quarterback that I know so well, and you know the, the two-headed monster that they have going on with Sabino Portella and uh, also Rajan Cooper, who obviously I know so well. They, 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 there's really, and then you throw the mix into it where, you know, the Notre Dame offered tight end Bauman is, I mean, there's so many different things as a defensive staff that you got to try to coordinate and scheme against. Right, right. RBC has got a roll in right now. Yeah, they do. So they're going to, they're, they're getting better and better each week. Scary with that talent really is. Number 15, Long Branch upset wow. number eight freehold. Well, I don't know if it's an upset because I told you in the beginning that Long Branch is going to come out and make it a big year for Coach Danny George. For Coach Danny George, yep. They play, and that's two good football teams. They're going to be two good playoff teams and make it a run for the championship in the States. And Christian Rodriguez, the senior quarterback, 247 with four touchdowns, also intercepted a pass. They got talent all over the field. They do long branches. And you know Freehold does too with Kamar Gill and and Tyler Ochulowski. Um a lot of talent on that field. Somebody had to come out with a win. And right now, I think Long Branch is scary because they're playing for a cause right now. Well, what's scary to me, I mean, it's a win for Long Branch. Putting twenty. The scary part is to hold that freehold offense to 14 points. That's what's really blowing my mind on the uh, seeing the scores. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, the freehold's a dangerous, dangerous offense when they go with that empty look with more guilt. Trust me, you've seen it in the past with the points that they've been putting up. Kudos to Long Branch. The green wave, the green wave are flowing. It's scary that Long Branch can match up with their athletes. So that's scary. Yeah, that's scary. true too. Scary that's coach. true yeah. too. Yep. Colonial Division, number six, Milltown South, with Coach Antonucci, who will be coming on our show a little bit later, yep. beating number 17, Jackson Memorial. That's just played some really outstanding football teams three I mean, weeks listen, in a their, row. Their schedule's been a bear oh, this year so far. I mean, yep. Band-Aids, I, I'm wearing them for them. It's yep. Dan Primiano, 192 yards, two touchdowns. Their defense is just playing 85 yards they gave up. Their defense led by Jack Latour, um, you know, is, is Colin Gallagher. That's a sophomore outside linebacker uh, yep. that we're going to yep. talk yep. a little bit yep. more later on. They're playing some good football. And I think can't Coach Ananucci's – Sitting pretty good with a couple more wins in the future. Would you agree with Middletown? Uh, well, yeah, the, I, I said it when when the season started. I saw that team last year and talking who well, I'm close with Coach Antonucci and Coach Bigos, the, the defense court. That team was young last year. They were all coming back. And I want everybody to understand something about Middletown. That might be one of the most talented and physical offensive line that Coach Antonucci, I'm sure he'll talk later on about yeah. what he has right now, led by Jake Williamson at center. In center, yeah, yep. highly recruited. Brandon yep. Rahill, we have to mention, anytime a defender picks the ball up and goes through that um, end zone, Brandon yep. Rahill scored a 52-yard pick right there. Coach, number nine, Manalapin, bouncing back this year, just beat number 19, Homedale, 31-20, and Coach Lepore has got them going. They are built defensively. They have a great run game. They're mature. They got, they got four or five linemen back. Um, they're physical. They got high numbers. They have outstanding kickers, not just their starters. They're about, they're loaded at a lot of positions right now, and they're playing yep. real well. Alex Dill had a 99-yard kickoff touchdown yep. return. Um, their kicker, like we said before, Michael Calton, 33-yard field goal, and he's a threat anytime he steps on a football field. You know, he's ready to kick a field goal. Elijah Marquez is is as good as anybody. Explosive running back took a 77-yard screen pass and. And Mike Hackle had three touchdown passes, um, one other with, with, to Mike Bamante. Um, he's just playing good football right now. They were against a stingy home Dell team, but right now Manalpin's a tough foe for anybody. Yeah, yeah kudos, I mean, home, Coach Rand has talked about how what the task was going to be playing up with these teams this year, you know, that they were going to compete and they were going to give it, you know, as, as much as they can. I mean, and, and obviously Jaden Gallo, who leads the home Dell team, you know, still had a good – 
game with a 40-yard touchdown run and a 65-yard touchdown reception. You know, Homedale is going to compete as, as hard as they can. But, yeah, I mean, Manalpin is really starting to stretch your legs too here, being undefeated. Yeah, and our last game, American Division, Donovan, two rivals, number three, Donovan Catholic, 34, beat the number 16-ranked Tom Drew North team, 13, 34-13, Donovan Catholic, and a very – High charged, emotional. You know these guys know all know each other. Um, yeah. You know the coaches work in the Tom Driver School District and all that. And yeah. Donovan Catholic's explosive. They are. They really are. And Kyrie, Kyrie, um, Kyrie, you Kyrie know, Drake. Kyrie Drake, um, just as expl- a ninety yard fake punt. That's just. I mean, Listen. it's a nice threat. Ky- Ky- Kyrie, I could not say enough about Kyrie as a character and as a, as a person, how great he is. But I will tell you this. He is one of the fastest football players I've ever coached. His speed is is blazing, blazing. It's unbelievable. Coach, here's one for you. Dante Fenari, okay, three interceptions this year. He had another one for a touchdown. Three interceptions, three touchdowns. When the ball hits his hand, he's in the end zone as the middle linebacker. A really good football player, a junior, one of the better linebackers in the short conference, and they're playing some good football right now. They had a little bump in the road playing right, one, right. playing a good game, good team against Rumson. That, that's um, a good point, Coach. I'm sure Coach Kirstian was happy to see you. are coming off a loss. You want to see what type of mental character your team's going to have coming off as a loss, and obviously it was a resounding yes that they came back with a 34-13 win. It's amazing. You see this other kid with a kick uh, – excuse me, Jet Sweet – run and it was a freshman michael thomas 51 yards it's like yeah. oh my god you know you're, you're saying to yourself hey when drake graduates they're gonna and then you see this freshman doing the same thing you're like, it's not fair kidding me right yeah so yeah. um there's a lot of talent there and they beat a real stingy tom driven north team that yeah. had colt's neck on the ropes yeah. two weeks before and uh, that just proves that wing, it had been a big win week one yeah yeah tom driven north is a good football team good football yes, program are. Well, coach, but sometimes the guys on that field are, are, you know, can take over a game and all that right there, coach. Yep. Good job recapping week two's, uh, week three's games, coach. Um, this is what I think of week three right now, all right? It's over. There you go. Done. Yep. On to yep. week four. All right. Now, during our coaches talk, our special guest, we have uh, coach. Steve Ananucci from Middletown South, the head football coach, just had his career 200th win milestone this weekend. Coach, I want to say congratulations from not only the Shore Football Report, but from the Shore, but from the Shore Conference Coaches Association. Coach, I appreciate it, guys. You know, it was uh, it was quite a night. It was it was a great night at our place. Uh, you know, it was great to be at home. You know, to have our fans be there. And uh, even better to see all the alum come back. Uh, it was just uh, at the end of the game, you know, just to see faces and names and, and uh, just, you know, just great people, people I've been associated with, you know, for the past 24 years. So uh, it was quite a night. You know, my family was there. Um, you know, I was able to have my wife and, and my two children at home right now. We're, we're, we're there as well. And it's, it was just a, a real surreal moment. Coach, that's that's incredible. I loved watching the excitement and seeing how – how excited you were and, and the players because a milestone like that is not just for you. It's for the community. It really is. And coach Holy, we were talking about it earlier. It also is for the short conference. So yes, having a milestone like that, we're proudly recognizing uh, that we got a guy in our, 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 our area that got 200 career wins coach. What goes through your mind after, after the game at night, do you start reminiscing on the past? Just to, because, I mean, that career milestone is achievement from 24 years of football. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, I, I took a deep breath uh, at the end of the game. And, uh, you know, you're, you're overwhelmed with a lot of different emotions and different feelings. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, you want to. Uh, you want to enjoy the moment, but you also don't want to make too much of the moment in, in you know, in lieu of your opponent and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and everything else that's going on as far as the game is concerned. You know, I've I've never really tried to make this about me. You know, this is about our program and it's about our kids. And, 
you know, that's what I was trying to sell during the week. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to be here for a little while. I, I can get to 200 wins, you know, sitting on, on 199. <laughs> I want to be three. I want to be three and zero at the night. At the end yeah. of the night, you know, that's that's the job. You know, you guys know that as well as anybody. You got to sell that. And, you know, now it's now it's move on to four and zero. I mean, now yeah. now we got to take the next step, put this one behind us. But uh, enjoy it. You know, enjoy it when you can. But it, it was definitely, like I said before, it was very surreal. Coach, I mean, like you said, you every time when you talk to me, it's always about the program. And the program, 24 years, 200 wins, 11 division titles, six state championships, and five undefeated seasons. That's a lot. Coach Holy, what do you think of that, man? Huh? That's a pretty nice resume. <laughs> I mean, it's Coach Coach Antonucci is a dear friend of mine. I mean, you need to know Coach Antonucci as a man before – coach to understand what type of character he is and what type of man he is more importantly to, to the young men than he's had over the last 24 years. You know, he embodies and lives the lifestyle he preaches as a coach. And I can tell you that firsthand. I mean, I got watching him getting ready to lead the team down the hill to go touch war Eagle down at the swamp running down the hill. And you can tell that, I mean, I know Steve when he was playing slot back at keyboard back in 87, I mean, he's still jumping around like a kid ready to lead his team down there. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. That's why it's – and I know he said it a thousand times. That's why it's the greatest game in the world is high school football, you know. And I think really a tribute to, to the coach is looking at his staff, how his staff has been with him for so long where there's such turnover in, in, in our, you know, our business of coaches that, you know, Coach Bigos has been with him for the long haul. You know, the tre you know, Nikki Trez and Joe Trez, Coach Roberts has been with him. I mean, it's it's a tribute to the culture and, and and the absolute mindset that he's instilled over at Middletown South about family, about loyalty, mm -hmm. about being there for your brother through the years. I mean, it's it's evident with Coach Antonucci. Coach Antonucci, I was talking to you earlier. Um, I wanted to talk about your past. I know you have a very, very hectic schedule right now with your successful season being 3-0. But I want to move to 2003 to 2006, and I want to hear from you. What, a, what an era of football. Four years, 47-1, and one, four state championships. What was – why was that era so special back then? Um, I, I'll tell you, I mean, we, we were blessed with some tremendous players. I mean, we, we had, you know, uh, at, at that time, I mean, I, there's a litany of guys that I could go through. I mean, starting with no Sean Moreno, uh, Nick Macaluso. Uh, I had a great night after the game with Eric Daneman, who was an all state safety <laughs> force on that team. Uh, you know, Trent McRae, Dave Dossel, Howard Barbieri, Mark Longo, Dan Rucker. Uh, there was just a litany of guys that were on that team. Andrew Paulson, who ended up playing at Lafayette, was, you know, was an All-American. Um, the one thing about that group of guys when they graduated, uh, I, and I don't know what it's like in some other places, but, but with that senior class itself, 15 of those guys went on to play college football at one level or another whether it was Division One, Division Two, or Division Three, they all had, you know, the, the the appetite to play at the next level, and they wanted it more than anything. So, uh, you know, the toughest part about that era was, you know, just making sure that we were covering all our bases. You know, it's it's very hard to tell somebody, you know, you got people like that and you lose a game. You know, and uh, I had a, I had a tough time, you know, really sleeping at night. You know, and I know people don't believe that, but. When you're running around with those kinds of guys, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you week in and week out to make sure that you, you know, you do your job. And look, there were there were teams that came after us every week. I mean, the, the battles with Wall, the battles with Long Branch, you know, oh, yeah. you know, week in, week out, just not knowing what you were going to get from your opponent. So uh, I credit those kids, my staff, myself, you know, for I've always said this, you know, when you have guys like that and you go on a run like that. You know, it, it makes it all worthwhile because, you know, now you can look back at it and say, you know what, I didn't screw that up. You know, and that was the most important thing to me. <laughs> yeah, and and the, the one thing I really respect about you and your program is that you've changed with your philosophy through the years. You didn't just stick to, you're not like just a wing T team. You're not just a veer team. You really changed offensively and defensively, right, Coach Holdy? Right? Uh, 1,000%. I, I, I've seen – Evolved from where he was playing a pro style type of offense and then brought coach Chickatelli on yeah. back in the 2000s and started to bring that type of option offense into into it and now progressed into what more is, you know, gone on with that, without a doubt. You know, again, you can never be complacent and you can never be 
just happy with what you're running because the game evolves as well as the kids evolve. And if you don't stay on top of it, you're going to be left behind. And we owe it to ourselves as coaches to constantly learn as much as the kids are trying to learn as we're trying to teach them. And I, obviously with the success, nobody could ever argue with what coach Antonucci has been able to do over the last 24 years. And it, it obviously it works. Yeah. Coach. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot, you know, it's a, it's a lot with your staff too and your kids, you know, just knowing your kids, knowing what you can and cannot do, you know, and, and just trying to make sure that you're putting the right pieces of the puzzle in the right places. Coach. Your that, playbook never dictates your personnel, right? Yeah. That's it. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, whatever you're doing, when you're looking into the magical crystal ball, it's working. So, what, I mean, you're putting in these stuff. The kids are all in. And, I mean, it, it's your approach and what you're doing. It's working. So, keep it up, Coach. Uh, Appreciate with that. it. Coach, now let's talk about the present. Um, 3-0, and when we talked over the summer, you were excited about your football team. And the names that are now coming out were the guys that you were talking about um, on our talk show. Um, you got a real big game against the Manalapan team that that's really bounced back with Coach Dominic Lepore. Uh, you guys are three three and zero. They're they're two and zero. Both have great defenses. Both both teams like to run the football. Both are experienced. You both got playmakers on both sides of the football. Um, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting on Friday night? Um. The usual when, when you head to Manalpin, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy place. It's not an easy environment. Um, you know, it's it's a grass field, which we, uh, you know, which we have to get, a, you know, uh, used to right away. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be wet. That's going to be the other part of, of the equation, you know, going in there. So, uh, you know, I expect to see exactly what I normally would expect to see from them. They're going to be physical. They're going to be get, they're going to get after us. You know, they're going to do everything they can to try and, uh, you know, get the uh, get the game going their way as quickly as they possibly can. You know, they, they hang their hat on defense just like we do. And uh, they like to pound the football, you know. So, uh, you know, they're going to do what they can, uh, like I said, to try to keep the game close. Uh, they do have a great quarterback, though. The kid can sling it. You know, he's got some guys he can throw it to a little bit. So they've opened that part of the offense up a little bit. Uh, but we feel the same. Like, we feel our guys can, you know, our guy can do the same thing. You know, he's uh, he's getting better every week. And, and we feel like we're getting better, you know, as we move forward. But uh, this will be a great game, man. This is one of those games in a short conference. If you have an opportunity to get out and watch, you know, on a yearly basis, it is truly a battle, you know. And uh, Eddie Guerrero texted me over the weekend, and you know, I have the, I have the utmost respect for Eddie and the job that he did there, you know, and obviously what Dom's doing there now. So mm -hmm. this should be a good game. This this will be more than a good game. This will be exciting. That's nice, Coach Holy. Got anything? Yeah, this is an absolute short conference history matchup right here. I mean, you got two storied programs with a lot of culture and a lot of history. And I, I saw it firsthand, obviously, from the sidelines last year with both teams, which were a little young, but they progressed. And I mean, and I said it before in our podcast before, Middletown South's offensive line is a very physical offensive line led by Jake Williamson, who I saw last year, who was an all-short type of player. And they've all culminated to that. Going to get some Alpin defense that were also young last year that are going to put their hand down. This is going to be a great fight. I mean, really a good fight right here. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, Coach, uh, I mean, you got experienced seniors and you got a sophomore, Colin Gallagher, that I keep hearing about. I keep hearing about this guy coming off the edge, and I know you were very high on him. And it must be nice to have not only guys, you know, mature guys now, but also younger guys coming up too, uh, picking up the slack and playing high level football. Yeah, we love, we love, you know, Colin, he's, he's been great. I and mean, his dad is a former player for us. He was actually on one of the first teams that I coached when I got there, you know, as an assistant. And uh, dad played at Princeton and, and was a tremendous football player. Uh, but Colin, Colin's got a motor. You know, we love him a lot. He's, uh, he's constantly, you know, he's pushing our kids in practice every day. You know, he's pushing himself in practice every day, which is a great tribute to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of two sophomores that play on our defense. You know, our, our safety, Jake Wakefield, is the other sophomore. And, uh, you know, both guys we can't say enough about, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, how they've been playing and what they've been giving us early in the season. So uh, we're excited for those two guys and excited for, you know, what we, you know, what, what Coach talked about. You know, we, we have some experience up front. You know, we, we've got some experience at the linebacker level. And, uh, you know, we feel like we're in a good place right now. And uh, this is a good test for us, no doubt. You know, and uh, we're excited about the opportunity and, and excited about, the, you know, the, uh, you know, the possibilities. Coach, I promised you 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to stop it right here. I want to make sure that you are rested for your big game versus Manalpin. And we wanted to bring you on here briefly just to congratulate you and have everybody in the short conference, you know, see you 
uh, on here is is really special. Two hundred career wins is incredible. I want you know now now Friday is your next step to get to three hundred. You know you yeah. got to be coaching. You got a lot more years in your coach. You're still a you got all that energy, man. That's great, man, to be doing that. So these kids are make you excited, huh? At Middletown South. Love, love the game, man. I love it. Love Friday yeah. nights. Love running down the hill. A big shout out because he'll never talk about himself or, or, or laud himself. But I'm wearing proudly the flag, Jersey Shore flag football yeah. shirt. And this will show you what he whatever you know, coach puts his heart into turns to gold. I saw it firsthand as a as a dad of girls. I can tell you I'm so excited to see where this is going to go to down the road, but to see where Coach took from a couple conversations from a female athlete saying, "Wish I, I wish I could get out there and play football with you, Coach, and see what's going on. To see eight teams go out on the field this year, and I mean, and you talk to Coach Tierney, Coach Davis, about, I mean, I'm watching some teams run RPO. I'm teaching some girls cover two, cover three, and they're picking up on it. And I mean, they don't want to lose. They want to go out there and play to see where this is going to really grow. And again, I mean, Nooch, he spearheaded it to be able to get, you know, the New York Giants behind it and Nike, yeah. which I know he's real tight with. I mean, it's a, it's a real, it's an awesome thing to bring that type of female athletics into the world of football. And that's, that's really only a tribute to him to get the ball rolling. Awesome coach. Real proud of that. that. That's something that I'm looking forward to, you know, like, like coach said, the growth of that program, you know, as we continue to move forward, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see where it goes and, and the support that we're going to get as it continues to grow. So I uh, can't thank you enough for being a part of it. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was great to see guys like yourself and Costantino and, yeah. and those guys out there, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Those girls enjoyed the heck out of that. Awesome. Awesome. Coach from the shore football report. Thank you very much. And, and, and wish you the very best, not only Friday, but for the rest of the season. There's a lot of football still left in the season. Sure is. Yeah, no, we're excited, like I said. And I appreciate you guys having me on here tonight and uh, appreciate what you guys are doing with this. This is awesome. You know, and, uh, this is a great thing for short conference football, you know, for, for coaches and for our players, obviously. This is, uh, you know, what you guys are doing here is top notch. And, and I can't thank you guys enough. A lot of good, a lot of good football programs, right? Coach Holy out in the short conference. And uh, we got to make Best sure that the football in the state, I'll put us up against anybody. anybody I'll carry that matter every day. All right, Happy coach. Best. Coach, thanks a lot. All right. Wishing thanks you the best Friday, much. man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Have a good night. All right, coach and everybody out there. Here's your week four games this weekend. And, and up top is, you know, I, I don't like to brag, but, but I'm up top with our picks. Up top, and, you know, it's, I don't think it's bragging if it's truthful, but I am number one. Um, yes, you are. Two twelve. I'm pretty good. If any of you guys have any uh, thing that you need solved, just give me a call, and I can solve anything right now because I think I can predict and and save the world right now with all my predictions out there. But enough. Mind you, you're only up by one game over Coach De Pasquale, and then two games up or three games up. <laughs> but that's yeah. okay. A win is a win is a win. Yes, yes, Coach. Uh, it's only one or two wins, but I'm going to bask in the glory right now. Slow it down. <laughs> just look, at, Coach, just eyeballing the schedule, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to shut this off, and then we're going to go and talk about it. Some interesting mm -hmm. games from top to bottom. A lot, a, a lot yep. of teams in the top 20 playing each other again, and, and teams on the bottom – that aren't top 20 yet or itching to get back in. So let's get going with this. Now let's start talking week four games, Coach. And uh, I got a lot to talk about, and so do you. A lot of good football games. And we're going to start with Jackson Liberty at Asbury Park. Now Jackson Liberty um, came off uh, a 26 nothing loss to, to Barnicket on the road. Asbury Park lost 42-14, two-point burrow. Two teams, both teams played some pretty good teams right there, and they both got to get in the winning ways um, to get to get that second win. Asbury Park has some high high profile wide receivers, a nice quarterback, and you know that Jason Brown airing it out, and they're hungry, coach. They really are. They got some big time playmakers. Liberty's really good in the box. They really what they do. Coach Schmidt, the D coordinator, does a real nice job. He likes to go cover zero, squeeze that extra defender in the box, kind of unblockable type guy, and they force you to throw the football. Coach, I don't know if you can do that against Asbury Park because Asbury Park yeah. can throw the football. So they're going to have to play a little bit different defense, I think, Jackson Liberty, because Asbury Park 
they're going to they're play into Asbury Park's hands if they do that. So this might be yeah, a tough this matchup. Is, this is a tough matchup. This is, this is a tough call right here. I think Asbury at home is a different team than when they're on the road with the community that rallies behind yeah. them with the Bishops. But this is a big Patriot division team, uh, divisional game between the two to get back on the road, uh, back on the roll here in this division. I agree. Yeah. So let's go. Good Monmouth at Lakewood. Monmouth at Lakewood. So that's a national division uh, key game for Monmouth because mm-hmm. they're on a roll right now. They're undefeated in the division. Yes, they are. They're playing a Lakewood team that at any time can break a play for a touchdown, as was last week's game, even though it was 18-6. He scored on the first play on his 60-yard play. So they can score any sing- any time at all. Monmouth is playing good football right now. They are playing real good football. They dropped down to this division, and it sounds like they're not going to give this away right now. They want to go for the division title, and they're aiming for Keyport right now. And Monmouth can throw the ball, run the ball with Julian Jones, uh, the quarterback, Anthony Jen has been throwing some big, big numbers out there. So they they can do off it. They can throw and, and run and their defense is, is running to the football seven points. They gave up against Kingsburg seven. And you know that they have that dynamic quarterback over the there. Quarterback, Mikhail Breed, yeah. 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 Um, you know, I think you said it best. I think, I think with Monmouth is starting to really distance himself as the top group three team in this division. And they're on a collision course with right now, the top group one team in that division, which is Keyport, which is going to be an exciting game down the road. You know, Lakewood, Lakewood, I wouldn't count out a coach Clark with doing, I mean, coming from a Friday night portable light game to go to a Saturday yeah. game at Lakewood, you know, Lakewood's going to come back after a lot tough loss last week, see what they could do. But Monmouth has got it going on too. You know, it's great. If we were coaching, we don't want to talk about what's going on next week and all that, but us now that we're media, we can. And it's great. Uh, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Keensburg at Point Beach. Keensburg is hungry for that 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 second win. Point Beach, they played real well against Lakewood. Lost a tough game against a good Keyport team. And they're trying to get their identity back. And someone's going to get that second win. And uh, there's going to be a lot of hungry players on that football field. Coach, like you said about that quarterback from Keensburg, tell me a little bit about him and, and – his dynamic play, which could hurt Point Beach. Well, he's an absolute dual threat. I mean, I've seen him live. He could sling the ball with the best of them. But when the pocket breaks down, if you don't have a, a, a pass contained or rush contained edge player on him, he will take the ball outside and kill you with his legs. So, I mean, he is a complete dual threat type of quarterback. You know, that's going to present a problem for Point Beach. So they're going to have to keep him in the pocket, contain him, hopefully play good pass defense behind him. But Point Beach, you know, they're coming off a tough loss. They already had a big win already this year. And, again, Friday night game at Point Beach. This is a good game here. You know, Keensburg, if they're thinking about playoffs down the road, this is a big win right here they're going to have to go after. I love talking about stars from the past that are now playing uh, now as a senior. And then you have stars coming up like Beely, yeah. Beely the quarterback from Point Beach, thrown for three 360 yards, four touchdown, plays linebacker. Um, a tough, rugged guy, football player. And I love quarterbacks that run the football. I really, Absolutely. really do. So look for this game to see who which star rises, Keensburg's yeah. quarterback or Point Beach's quarterback. We know they have nice pieces around them and all that, but somebody's going to make a name for themselves and get them that second win right there. Coach yep. Keyport, one of the hottest teams around right now. Um, Keyport playing – at Pinelands, Pinelands has played a, a nice emotional win at Lakewood. You know, they're one and one playing Keyport now, who's three and oh. Keyport's playing really good football, and that's going to be a really hard task for Pinelands, I believe, even though they're playing at home. DJ Thompson is a all shore football player. I don't care what group he is or what division he's at. There's nobody having a better season than him than DJ Thompson right now. No, I, I agree with you, but Keyport has the weapons with the interior, with the running with Nazir Treadwell, as well as on the on the perimeter with DJ Thompson. But in all aspects, we touched on it before, in kick return and punt return, as well as, well as playing defensive back with his length and his size and his speed. Um, the only thing, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a long drive from here. You're talking about probably 
the two more, most furthest points of the short conference from exit 117 down to exit 63 on the parkway or 57 on the parkway. Mm-hmm. That's a long ride to go on a Friday night and then get off the bus yeah. and go. And everybody knows that walk from Pinelands all the way up to that field, probably the longest walk in short conference. Hitchhike there. Yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. So that's a home field advantage, but, you know, keyboard's got it going on right now. Coach, we had Nooch uh, on earlier, and he kind of said, and, and we didn't actually kind of talk about it, but the rain is going to be yeah. a, a little bit of an issue. And then I should Could be, be thinking a slower track for Keyport against Pinelands, yeah. and Pinelands is going to load the box where they traditionally yep. do. I don't know if yeah. you can yeah. do that with DJ Thompson. So they're going to have to pick and choose, but a lot of a lot of slippery uh, football is going to be out there. So I don't know why I wasn't thinking that. So maybe that might neutralize. Who knows? When it rains, it equals the game a little bit. Absolutely right. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Pinelands is going to have to win it in the trenches. If Keyport has a tough time throwing a football, it could be a very interesting low-scoring game, even though Keyport can score with the best of them. Uh, Neptune at Matawan. Very interesting game. Intriguing. Very, very interesting game. Um, Coach Duffy got hired real late, and they've shown some spurts uh, playing some pretty good football and, and scrimmages. And, um, you know, they're not – now they're playing the Matawan football team too who kind of surprised the shore with a nice win against Ocean and came down to earth a little bit in their losses to Marlboro and Cole Snack, but both teams are in the top 20. So yeah. I don't know what to say. Is it, is it Matt, you know, which Matawan team's going to show up? They're young coach. They're young. So you just don't know what's going to go through a 16, 17, 18 year old kids head. You just don't know, but they do have the talent and believe it or not, anybody who, who puts their head on straight uh, at that, that age, they can do anything. They really can. A lot of good yeah. athletes out there. Um, I'm very interested. It's going to be played on the turf. So, you know, you can kind of withstand the storm with, with the rain. Um, I'm excited to see who wins this game. I really am. Yeah, I agree with you. This will, this will tell us a little something about Neptune, who's who's been trying to climb the ladder a little bit each game that they play. But Matawan, again, you touched on it, won their first game in the last two losses, but against really two quality opponents. So does Matawan really push their, you know, ego across the line of scrimmage and say, listen, we're that good? Or does Neptune say we can compete with everybody? So I agree. This is an intriguing game. Matawan likes to throw the football with their with their big, strong quarterback, Bonagora. Um, if it's raining, I know you still can throw the football, but it, it is going to be a little bit tougher. So mm-hmm. very interesting football game at Matawan. Neptune at Matawan really is. Ocean at Red Bank. Now, is this where Ocean gets its first win, or this is where Red Bank piggybacks and gets its yeah. second win? Again, love it. Week four, this could change the whole season with with this type of game right here. And Ocean, I know Coach Klein. He's he's. I mean, what a great program he runs and all this stuff. He's not a traditional zero and three football team. They're really not, and I can't look at them as that because they're playing some good good competition. They really are. Um, they have an outstanding quarterback, Tyler Douglas. You're, you're in every single game with him. You know, Shane, Shane Garrett um, on the D-line, tight end. And, and Red Bank's been able to throw the football with everybody, but making it interesting. When you were a first-year coach and you win the first game, it gets easier. It gets easier. Yep. Yes, it does. And I'm not talking to a rookie coach over there at Red Bank. I was either. just going to say you're not talking to a, a, a rookie first-year coach. You're talking to a guy that's won – State championships as a head coach. That's, that's two, th- th- those two head coaches on the sidelines at Ocean with Coach Klein and Coach Fallon been there, done it. So, exactly. you know, um, they're going to make this make it work. And uh, that's going to be, again, another exciting game with a lot of athletes on the football field yeah. that both teams are hungry to kind of get the, get them back in the winning winning ways. St. John Vienne at, Saint, uh, at Tom Driver South. Interesting game. South has been – up and down, up and down, and what do they do? They surprise everybody and upset Brick Memorial 14-12. It's at Tom River South. St. John Vianney, I mean, they're giving up 9.3 points a game defensively, playing really good good ball. Coach, run game was working big time against Tom River East. If they can keep that going, I, I kind of think that they're going to be, you know, rolling for the next couple games. They really are. 
Uh, they have some athletes right there. South is a little banged up. They have a sophomore quarterback and Jimmy Alexander. Sometimes with sophomores, coach, you know, they're inconsistent. We don't know. The jur- jury's still out with that. But I do know he's got an outstanding receiver, Migliori, with that. So, interesting. That's why the schedule's great this year. I mean, I don't ever remember St. John Vianney ever playing Tom's River South. No. I mean, so this is this is a game that really – it's 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 kind of intriguing. It's at TR South, you know, St. John Vianney. I don't remember them playing there. They're coming off a big win. TR South has already got a good staple win yeah. underneath their belt this year. Yeah. This is SJB going down to a traditional A South team. I mean, this is a good game. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. Um, it's always tough to play at Tom Drew South with the band, yeah, absolutely. the crowd. Um, you know, again, when you're dealing with 16, 17, 8 year old, 18 year old kids with everybody, you know, backing them up. It's tough to mm-hmm. tough to win there. It really is. Number nineteen, yes, number nineteen, brick at Brick Memorial, crosstown rivals. Throw everything out the window. Brick Memorial had was upset last week, um, 14-12. But um, now you're playing your rival school. Brick just got back into the top twenty. They beat Howell twelve seven. They play good defense, Brick. They really do. They're physical. Physical up front on both sides of the ball, led by Darren Newcomb, um, the senior laden team. Brick Memorial also has a lot of guys back and an outstanding quarterback, Connor Deeks. Um, interesting. A lot of good football. I hate for it to rain in a rivalry game like that. I really do. Um, but, you know, who knows? I've, Come seen to think of it. Game with, I've seen many a game with Brick playing in an absolute slop. On that field, when that rain hits there, you know that as much as I do. Mm. But so, I mean, to say that plus Brick Memorial, they they could be sitting, you know, two and three, two and zero right now. You lose on a two point, you know, mm. a special teams two point conversion. I mean, this is this is a really really good game to throw the history between the two teams. I mean, there's no love lost. Make no mistake about it. You know, no. this is a great yeah. ace again, traditional A South matchup. Yeah. Yeah. You there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. B- big, big game. Rivalry game. Throw out the records. But um, Brick's going to Brick's gonna be tough. They're, they're, they're a veteran team that's very, very physical. Brick Memorial plays with a little finesse. I know they got a lot of guys back on the line and all that, too. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens over there. Freehold yep. Township at number 18. 18. Marlboro. Coach, things are flipped around right now. And because – Corey Davies, the head coach at, at Freehold Township, has always been a traditional top yeah, right. 20 type of team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Marlboro has always been looking up. You know, now it's reverse his role. Marlboro is now in the top 20, and Freehold Township hasn't had a win. So, and that's what happens in high school football. It goes in cycles. And right now, the cycle is Marlboro. Marlboro yeah, yeah. seems like the hot football team, and – you know, if they they want to go for a division championship, they have to beat Freehold Township. They have yep. to. They have to. Two brothers, we've talked about it before, Zach Mendez and Ryan Mendez. You know, it's, a, it's very interesting. Both jumping in the same car going home, just stud kids. Offensively, defensively, probably sell hot dogs in the stands. They're, they're so multi, multi-talented right there. A.J. Schwartz is a good dual threat. And he also plays defense. Um, and Frio Township, with with their uh, sophomore quarterback um, Aguello, is yep. um, you know you're always Co- Coach Davies always has a good quarterback with with good numbers. His philosophy always works um, in there. And uh, I'm not used to having Coach Davies, you know, being zero and three. He's not. He's usually in the mix all the time. So it's going to be interesting. He's probably got a bunch of tricks up his sleeve right now. Coach Davies playing a freehold district team in Marlboro. In Marlboro this, is right big, this is a big Liberty Division game for Marlboro here. They can start to distance himself out. You know, it's a Saturday game at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Freehold Township traditionally a Friday night team. You know, I'm eager to see, plus the, see the, the support in the student body. Yeah. You said it best. Who would have predicted week four? Marlboro sitting 18 in our top 20. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm eager to see if the support comes out from Marlboro, show what type of special season they got going on right now. Coach, next game, number 17, Barnicket at Shore. Five years ago, we started this rivalry. And, yeah. um, 
you know, it's it's been a rivalry. Every game's been right to the wire. Yeah. Um, Shore, Shore beat us 41-28 five years ago, and then Barnicket won four years in a row. Close games, though. Real You're close not bragging, games. though. What? You're not bragging. No, I'm, just, I'm proud of it because <laughs> that's a good football team, a good yes, football sir. program. And yes, um, sir. I'm set, what I'm trying to say is Shore has been playing some really good football. The last yes. two weeks, Coach Kaz has really got them going. A young football team with a senior who's playing probably with DJ Thompson, Jamie, Jamie Mazzucco. I mean, it's amazing. He's playing. Yeah. He's the middle linebacker, plays quarterback. Sometimes he plays tailback. He's a dude. Yeah. Over 230-something yards in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, he's going to be tough. It's very interesting because they're playing good football, and this guy is leading the way against a Barnicat team that's very explosive um, and and antsy to be 4-0. And, and antsy to 4-0. I, I don't want to put you on a spot here. The, the game is at short yeah. on a Friday night. Is it? I know how I felt as a coach. What do you feel as a coach going in the shore playing on a Friday night? Oh, shore is tough wherever you play them. They really are. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we played back. I mean, just wars. Barnicat and Shore is is slowly becoming a really highly anticipated rivalry. Two That's small, awesome. Two smaller schools yeah. have a lot of respect for each other. With tradition with both schools, yep. You have Coach Kaz, who's a Hall of Fame coach. Going against yeah. a rookie coach and Coach Coveen that's been on my staff for 13 years. So very interesting dynamics. Yeah. My, my whole staff is back. Their staff is, you know, I'm the only one out of the equation. I'm going to sit there. <laughs> I'm going to watch it in the stands and and, and and eat my soggy popcorn, you know, and all that stuff. But real good football. I have a lot of respect for sure. And I'm real proud of how Barnicat is playing this year. And um, it'll be a good football game. Uh, Barney yeah. getting short. Really will with that. Manchester at number 16, Point Borough. And Point Borough is climbing up the top 20 very quickly. And their scores are, are proving that they are a team to beat right now. Um, 117 and 39 points they've been given up. And they're winning convincingly in, in all their games. They're very explosive. I think offensively this might be the most explosive backfield they've had in a in, in a couple years. They really have with Vitali, Siliento, Oliphant, who's their, their wing guy right there, and Croce. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that says a lot. Four guys that can carry the ball at any time, and they have a big, big offensive line, and they're blitzing all the time defensively. Uh, that's that. Now, on the other side, Manchester is going to be in every game. They have a quarterback, Savon Meyer, is as good as anybody. They have yep. a bunch of receivers from left to right that can run with anybody. So if Manchester solids it up up front, they spread you out and no and empty. Who knows? I mean, matchups are matchups, coach. You don't know how you fare with matchups. You could do well with one game and another game, the matchup might be a little different, right? Yeah, I agree with you. Manchester's going to have to get on the board here. And score offensively and try to keep the ball off a of point because point Borough, make no mistake about it, they're going to put their hand on the ground and they're going to run the football. I mean, it's already been proven with Salento, you know, Vitali, how they're trying to run the ball here. So for Manchester, they got to get obviously with the with the outstanding athlete they have in Myers. Yeah. What they have in Manchester, they need to make some plays, keep them off the field, and put some points on the board to keep this game. It's, it's, it's in the rain, but I, I just think of it as a high-scoring game. And I think yep. it's going to go so fast. I don't know if Manchester can slow it down because they have to score too. So this could be yep. something in the 30s, I think. I potentially, yep. potentially it could be. Interesting yep. game right there of two different style teams. Number 14, Middletown North at Howell. Uh, I got a chance to watch Middletown North up close. I, I'm very impressed on, on their, their play. They're physical. And, and they played a very physical team, at Lacey. And Milltown North could have won the game. They they got stopped on a, a goal line drive, and, you know, it, it just was a big, big play and never got the momentum back. They were winning 26-14 against Lacey. It's amazing. Correct. You're winning 26-14, and then you lose. And then all of a sudden people start thinking, oh, this you could be 2-0 and like that, and you really could. So that was a tough loss for Milltown North. They got it bounced back. Now, and Howell team that's kind of playing tough with people, but not enough to win. 
th- th- this could be a potential game where Howell surprises that Middletown North. Uh, it's going to be very interesting seeing the character of Middletown North, how they bounce back, Coach. But they do have – Yeah, I think, I think what leans with Middletown North right there is that – and you were just touching on it. This is where your senior leadership comes to play, playing a tough game against Lacey and right in the game, like you said, and then all of a sudden the game starts to slip away. This is where the senior leaders start stepping up at practice during the week, making sure that the ship stays on course. So I would look for the senior – like a hat out at running back, Giannone at quarterback. That's where you start taking over your team. Coach, I really like the quarterback for Howell, Jardim, thrown for 333 yards, three touchdowns. Um, and w- with that, the receiver, uh, Gors- Gar- Gartenstein, five catches, 145, two, two touchdowns. Um, you have guys like that, you're in any game. Because at any sure time, you, you could throw the ball vertical. Uh, again, it's raining out, but it's on turf. Howell's got turf. So, mm-hmm. I mean – I'm trying to think of if there's an upset and all here. This potentially could have a potential upset making. It really does because I just think that, again, Coach Hill's first year, they're, you're going to click one day. And they, they, they hung tough in two of their games. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Middletown North coming off a loss. You never know, Coach. And you don't know the mood is going to be with rain and all that, but Absolutely. I think Coach Steve Bush will have him ready, but again, you never know. Um, I'm interested to see that game. Number 12, Frio Burrow at Tom Driver East. Frio Burrow's not used to losing at home um, recently. They're not. Yeah. You know, playing a Tom Driver East team that is up and down. You can't have an emotional win against South and then the next week, you know, get shut out for the second time in a row. So, you know, Freehold has way too much speed for Tom Dereese. And I'm just going to keep it real with that with um, Kamora Gill. Gill. Yep. You know, Kamora Gill and and um, who's the other? Calhoun on, Cal- on the outside right there. Calhoun, yep. I mean, this might be a, a time where Freehold just gets it back going again. They're going to be playing on the turf. They're very fast. Very, very fast. Tom Drew East didn't do very well against St. John Vianney. This is going to be a real tough game at home for East, and uh, they need to bounce back real quickly because it's tough that when you get shut out twice, two out of three games, and now they're playing a free old team that can put it up, Coach, with numbers. Yeah, so, I, 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 you hit all my bullet points on the game here. I think I, I think the speed and the athleticism that the, that Freehold's going to be proposing to Tom Driver East. I know Tom Driver East is at home, Yeah, but – and you know we all know as coaches, Freehold's going to be coming in with a chip on the shoulder after a, you know after a loss yeah. last week. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be that's going to be a little bit of a uphill game for Tom Jerry's. When you have teams not used to losing and then they lose, yeah, there's, there's a little nastiness at the yeah. practices. Yeah, you, you know, know what those practices are like during the week. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to wait six days to get that taste out of your mouth. Yep. Well, we're going to find out in a couple of days. Freehold at Tom Drew East. Jackson at number 11, Long Branch. And Long Branch has to be this team that keeps saying, I told you so. I t-. And I'm trying to side when I'm going, no, I, I got you. You're good. <laughs> I mean, I, I I hear it from them. But Danny George, I'm a big Danny George fan. And when he announced that it was his last, ga- uh, last season, scary with the talent he's got coming back. Um, yeah. Those kids are really playing for him, and they really kind of got 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 him on a platform where this is for you, Coach. God, if he keeps saying this is for you like 11 times this year, that means they're state champs, Coach. <laughs> playing a Jackson team that – You just can't catch a breath with this schedule. I mean, really. Can you say the best 0-3 team around? I mean, Honestly, I, I agree with you. I mean, I mean, it's not insulting saying that. We're kind of – Respect them. They're a tough football team. I know they had um, – I think Eric Eby sat out last game, who was all sure D lineman. Big difference, Coach. You take one kid like that out of a game, did not play against Middletown South, I was told, and yeah. should be playing this game, which could yeah. even things out. But, um, you know, Jackson's got a lot of good young players too, and they're playing tough teams. Their, their power points, their OSI is incredible right now. It really is. I agree with you. I mean, they're they're still they in a mix for the playoffs. Their, they lost their first two games by one point each. 
And then they run into a buzzsaw with Middletown South, who's playing for their coach for their 200th yeah. win yeah. at home. I mean, uh, I, 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 my hat's off. To that. That, that is as tough of a schedule as you could possibly start your season off with. And now they roll into the Danny George, you know, farewell tour this week on a Friday night. You know, it's tough. You know, but Greta Jackson, they're playing hard. You know, it's just it's a tough schedule. You know who's playing hard? Christian Rodriguez. That's who's yeah, playing for, hard. Yeah, yeah. The quarterback, yeah, yep, he's at DB. He got an interception. Uh, I, I think Long Branch is going to go as far as Christian Rodriguez, and yeah. and by the the looks of the beginning of the season, Christian Rod. Uh, I think I got it right here. He's twenty two for twenty seven, eighty two percent, three hundred and two yards and four touchdowns in two games. That's a pretty good completion percentage. Uh, <laughs> Coach, if you're going to ride the horse right now, the, so to speak. Ride the horse to get. He, he's yeah. uh, definitely living up to the bill right there. Long Branch is going to be a tough one, but Jackson is hungry, and Jackson's a, a proven program winner right there. 13 Central at 15 Raritan. This is probably the game of the week in a lot of places. Um, two teams that uh, have high um, – Hopes for the playoffs, Central, you know, they like to be under the radar a little bit. Coaches like to, you know, like to, but you can't, you can't hide when you have scored. Um, when you have, I got it right here, my bad. When you scored 104 points Where and it's given up, zero. given up zero. zero. Ten yeah. times zero, that's zero. That's how many points they've given up. Exactly right. Wow. And the old saying is, you know, you could score a million points, but if you don't give up one point, you never lose. You don't win. You That's know, right. and, and they're playing good ball. They're averaging over 30 points a game and giving up zero. Very impressive style of play they're playing. This is going to be a big PowerPoint uh, playoff game. It really is. Raritan is central. And Raritan's got to come back from a, a tough loss against RBC, but I think yeah. anybody who plays RBC is going to have to kind of regroup a little bit right here. Raritan's got a lot of guys back. They were a little dinged up, a couple guys. I think a couple guys are coming back. This is going to be a very, very close game. I don't see it going any farther than 10 points either way. Um, two well-coached football teams, and, um, you know, we're going to see what's, you know. It's amazing how our top 20 rules out. We had it last week with Lacey and Middletown North, and now you have 13 versus 15 yeah. this week with Central and Raritan. It's, it's, it's been, awesome how things work each other out, you know? Coaches have been pretty good with, yeah, with those. I agree. I agree. I agree, you know? You know, this could, this could be a, uh, you know, right to the last drive type of game. Absolutely. And you know what? And that's their philosophy. Both played at their defense, too. So mm -hmm. let them play. There you go. Sure. Good. Yep. Number 20, Tom Driven North at number seven, Wall. Coach, two teams, two programs that are winless. Both are 0-2. Something's got to give. Something's got to give. And, and and even if the other team loses, it, they're still good. They're still good. They really are. Um, but just in a tough division, Wall got hit with some key injuries with their linebackers. We know who they are. We don't have to mention their names. I think, right I, I the think they might be coming back. And, I mean, they were the number one team in the state last year with a couple kids that just graduated. So, Wall played real tough against RBC. Uh, it says a lot about their character coming back like that, Coach. It really does. They're hungry for a win. I know Tom Drew North is really, really young. Wall is an experienced senior team. North is a one year away from being a, a, a solid team. Uh, mature football team, but they have talent. They really do. Um, two well-coached teams playing at wall on the grass in the rain. That could be a neutralizer. I was just going to mention that. Yep. Yep. Could be a neutralizer, but I just still stick in my head. Wall is a pretty physical football team when they have everybody playing. They really do. Yeah, I agree with you. And they've had a week off to kind of lick their wounds, heal up a little bit. Obviously they've been, well scouted up this week, yeah. preparing for TR North. So I wouldn't be surprised that Wall comes out and kind of flexes their muscles a little bit this week. Yeah, interesting. Jake what was it Jake Davis played tailback and had over 200 yards against RBC. That has to be mm -hmm. noted. Not too many people can do that. Coach. Or against that defense, exactly. You know this this guy uh, Jake Davis was probably their third string tailback, or maybe even fourth during the summer, and he mm -hmm. merged that way. So. That, that shows some prom, promise right there. 
of getting some type of playmaker that way. Number six, Middletown South. We just had Coach Antonucci here against number eight, Manalapin. Huge Colonial Division game here. Yeah. Um, two undefeated teams, two yeah. teams that play to their defense, two teams that have excellent run games, two teams that have excellent line play. Line play, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. Quarterback play. I mean – I can't be in every place right now. I really can't yeah. be here or there, whatever. I wish they stagger the games, uh, the I times. Agree. I really do. And, um, you know, one thing I got to say about Coach Lapore is that uh, he's brought these guys back to playing Manalvin football of the past. <laughs> this is a big statement game right here. If they could beat uh, a Coach Steve Antonucci, number six ranked team, really good. Middletown yeah. South is pretty good. Yeah, I said Manalpin's going to be rocking though. That's a Friday night game in Manalpin, both undefeated teams, huge colonial division game, both undefeated in the division, and both teams know each other very, very well, very well. You know, you flip a coin. What's that? You flip a coin and let the coin determine who wins. And then you throw the old intangible, like you mentioned before, Rob. You throw the rain into the mix on a grass field at Manalpin. Wow. I know Coach Antonucci, we, we heard in his interview, he was kind of concerned about the rain as well, playing on grass. This could be a great game, a, a, a legendary game. Coach, my visor doesn't like getting wet either. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't think – I don't know too many people that enjoy rain. And all those I, guys out there that say, oh, I'd rather play in the rain. They're I'm, liars. Yeah, I would say 80% of them are liars. Yeah. Right? When the camera's off, the, no, I – no. There's no way I enjoyed it in all the years. I've, no been in, it. I've been in locker rooms where my line coaches or de- defensive coordinators are out there that they love the rain. I catch them at halftime drying off their clothes and all yeah, that. I don't exactly. buy it. But I that, agree with you. Coach, that is going to be a fun-filled football game. Middletown South versus Manalpin. A lot of top-level talent being on that field right there. It really is. Yep. <laughs> Holmdale at number five, Southern Regional. Very far distant game. Homedale coming from uh, exit – what? what is that, exit? What, the exit 117. 117. I mean, I don't think you could play anybody any farther away than Homedale and Southern. Unbelievable. <laughs> In terms of geographically. Yeah. But um, Jaden Brown had a week off. Uh, he's a mutter. I'm going to tell you right now, the 220-something pound frame tailback. That can, yeah. I, I, this is what this is why you got a kid like him playing. Yeah, you know? yeah. But Holmdale's got Sordo, the linebacker, Gallo, two-way player. Um, you know, there's some good players. Holmdale played some tough teams. They yeah, really it's... have. Uh, but their style of play in this rain, huh, you know, yeah. could could be could be something that could neutralize you know Southern Regional. Two 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 good football teams. They really are. Homedale dropped out of the top twenty, and and I'm sure they want to get back in there. They really do. You beat a Southern Regional team, you're going to jump up quite a bit of spots. You really are. No, yeah, I'm sure Coach Rannis has looked at it. You know, they started off strong with the win week one, and then two tough teams they played. They get back and they take a win away from Southern. That's a lot of power points on the board there for Homedale looking at Group Three playoffs. You know, so this is a tough climb for them. You know, obviously, but. You know, Southern's rolling right now. I know Southern's not doing it, but I'm looking at it. That that, that winner of the Manalip and Milltown South game. Well, there's another guy. So there's another yeah. guy that's got it. They got to play, and that's Southern. But Southern's yeah, got to beat Holmdale to make that game very special. They really do. Agreed. So, a yeah. lot of interesting games going on, Coach, with that. Three more. We got number three, Donovan Catholic at number four. You can't get any closer. Number three, Donovan Catholic at number four, Colts Neck. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Saturday, too. I don't yeah, know what the weather report is on Saturday. Yeah. You know, you know what I didn't like? I didn't like the fact when we would play on a Friday night and then Saturday would be 85 degrees and sunny, no clouds. I used to hate that. I used and to hate that. Sometimes you're dealing with a 58-degree night with kind of overcast and all of a sudden clears up Saturday afternoon. I know. Yeah. I agree. I'll, 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 I'll tell you a quick story before we talk about this. We were playing Central um, last year, and it was raining, and it was the first turf game. The first turf game we were playing at Barnegat. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm going to tell you how I, I and, and I wanted I didn't want to play in the rain. I didn't want to, you know what I, you know who I dragged into. And, and listen, all the ladies out there are going to love it. The head football coach goes to the AD and the AD is like, I can't change this game. We spent th- hundreds of thousand dollars for a, a turf field and you want to turf cancel field. it. You know what I said? It was senior night. I said, all those mothers make up. <laughs> I said that to him. And he looked at me. I go, really? and it was supposed to be real nice the next day. I said, I said, we might have turf, but all those senior mothers wearing all the makeup, their special day, and they're and not going to be able to they're not going to be able to enjoy the game. That's what you want, like that. And you know what he sided with? The senior mom. The mom story. And you know yeah. what? The next day, did I have a lot of pressure to win that game? Yeah. Holy smokes. Luckily, we won that game. Um, but there was a lot of pressure. And yeah, I just don't like that the fans only think that we only try to coach the game of football. Oh, uh, he also told yeah, me you know, the game plan everything. My AD said if we're canceling this game, you better throw the ball the next day and all that. <laughs> so my play call was third and one. We had to throw our, our five step drop game and all that, but I don't like playing it in the rain. Enough about that. Donovan Catholic versus Colts neck three and four. Wow, physical football teams. We know Donovan Catholic is physical too with extra special guys on the perimeter, a little extra. Colts Neck doesn't have that. They have some hardcore uh, football players with Tommy Fallon. Mm-hmm. Um, Manos is running real hard. I love Bonanno, the linebacker. I think he's a dude, man. He's a dude. But their line play, Colts Neck, with Volpe, Whalen, um, I think it's Liguori. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're dudes. They are dudes. And it's going to be very interesting when – their dudes are going against um, a, a very, very deep Donovan Catholic too. Ippolito, um, Karen McNair, um, yep. Wilkins. They got dudes. Dante Veneri is, is a linebacker that he touches the football. He goes to the house all the time. So they got playmakers not only on offense but defense. And your guy right there, Drake Kyrie, yep. is probably one of the most explosive kids in, the, in, in not only the shore but the state. They really are. Very interesting game. Donovan's athletes with also they got the guys up front against Colts Neck that's going to try and play in the phone booth. Well, and that's just, what that's what I've written here. The, 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 the number one is three letters, L-O-S. The, the, the team that controls the line of scrimmage right here, yeah. that's who's going to win the game. If, if Colts Neck can impose their will on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it, this is going to be a great game. If Donovan can do what they have to do on offense – Spread the ball out, put the ball, get, score fast, and yeah. then stop yeah. stop that Colts neck type of offense. It's going to go Donovan's way. So the game's going to be one on the line of scrimmage right here. Oh, it's interesting. It's interesting. A lot of different dynamics uh, on that field. Interesting to yeah. see which one prevails with that right there. Number yeah. two, RBC at number nine, Manasquan, number nine. Manasquan is very excited about this game. A new look, Manasquan. Football team, offensively, a little bit, no 20 personnel, 21 personnel, more 11 personnel, throwing the football, running with RPOs defensively. They're typical Manisquan, 4-3. They're going to play good football. They got depth. They got a lot of experience, Coach, a lot of experience. I love the linebacker Burns from Manisquan. I really do. Uh, Big, strong football player. They got dudes all over the place. RBC does too. RBC does too. They've shown a lot of explosive plays. Their run game, I think they're averaging like eight and a half yards a carry yeah. as a team. Yeah. As a team. And their line yep. is as big as anybody's coach. You know and that. We're at that. We're at that time of the year right now. This is a major game in the Constitution Division right now. Both teams in, undefeated in the division right now. This is where it's going to come down to it. Does Manisquan's offense, which Coach Sella, start to really start to take them up to the next level to be able to produce some points? Or does RBC really say, listen, we're the king of this division. Yeah. We're going to do what we do with our athletes, you know. But I'm very, uh, I'm really looking forward to see how Manisquan does against RBC. Coach, you know where this game's being played at, right? It's at, it's at Vic Kabooma Warrior yeah, Field, yeah. A lot of teams don't come out of there victorious. Nope. I don't know if you knew that. Um, there's something about the smell of the popcorn and you know on the sidelines that they have there. I think that hypnotizes the visiting team. 
and gets yep. Madison Squam going. I told Coach Price that on our co- coaches talk show this summer. Saturday so, football at Squam with the band coming down Main Street. There's nothing like it. Interesting. A lot of athletes on that field, Coach. Madison Squam's built to to make a long run in the playoffs, but yep. in the meantime, this game right here could help them solidify yeah. a home field yep. Yep. Uh, yep. and not only that with their division but very interesting rbc i'm a big i like them i mean there's a lot of good teams here there really are so very interesting game between rbc and manis one and the last game last game number 10 lacy at number one rumson i'm gonna say this all right you're talking about rumson's defense now we talked about Central. That's fine. But Rumson's defense has given up zero, and zero. And they played Donovan Catholic. Against what teams, exactly. Against Donovan Catholic that scored 54 the week before. Yep. Um, and then they gave up zero against Wall. Against which, Wall Township. Which just kind of everybody was in shock with that. Yep. They given up, I think, six first downs. Um, interesting. They played one side of the ball. Lacey? Has a bunch of guys that play both ways. Physical, physical. Scott Stevens is as physical as anybody out there. The big fullback and linebacker. I'm very interested to see if Lacey, and there's people out there that said Lacey is built to to give Rumson some problems. And problems could go either way. It could be moving the football a little bit or winning. We don't know. But Lacey is a veteran football team with a three-year quarterback. With outstanding receivers, they're getting one of their other receivers back, McGlove. But Rumson's Rumson. Rumson's number one for a reason, Coach. They're <laughs> number one for a reason. Very interesting game, Lacey and Rumson, to me. Um, I could see Lacey being competitive for a great deal in, in high school. If you're The longer you're competitive, who knows what happens at the end. Who knows? Um, you know, Rumson has been flawless. Well, I won't give you my pick right now, but here, here's the number one thing that I looked at, and I, and I know that staff, and I know the people on it very well. Rumson had a bye week last week. Yeah, you're talking four former head coaches on that staff. Oh, yeah. Then to go with Coach Schulte, who's been in the game for over 35 years. Oh yeah, the game plan for this game that's coming up right now. Yeah, it's this is going to be a good game, but it's going to be tough to see what happens right now. Now, Lacey can be able to do what they did last week. And you obviously know that your seniors are battle-tested. Yep. They came from behind against a tough Middletown North team. So you know that they're battle-tested already. But now this is a totally different animal going on right now. Rumpson special. Yes. Rumpson special. And you don't realize yes. that until as the season goes on. They're yep. special. They're yep. special. These are new stars coming about, yep. led, led by Colin Kennedy. Um, yep. there, there's some stars. And we know Lista, about their linebacker, Lista, linebacker yeah. Mariarty and, and Lista. Um, yeah. th- they're special. They're special. So if you can't dominate one side of the ball against Rumson, the other the other side of the ball is resting up and it's just going to yeah. take it, take advantage of it. Yeah. Rumson's built for a state championship uh, team, and who knows about that. Yeah. So be a good game. Be a good game, so we'll say. Coach, that is all week four games. Um, boy, oh boy, do we give everybody love. Boy, <laughs> we talk about everybody. We're like, except, the, except their wives. We are like <laughs> the gossip people. We talk about everybody, but we talk about it in football. Yeah. We talk about it in the football. We're enjoying our, our gig right here, coach. Um, yeah. this will be out. We even, sque- we even squeezed in a back to school night. <laughs> I'm still in school. I'm. I'm still in school. I didn't wear the visor, of course, but, you know, yeah. but we're still, but, you know, this will be out tomorrow morning. So the time you see it, it won't be tomorrow, it'll be today. So whatever, this will be out though um, yeah. in the morning and we'll get it. Our ratings have been great. I mean, I'm curious how it goes. Five and six hundreds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My other video hit almost a thousand. Um, so wow. It's it's hitting real good, Coach. We're having fun, and I appreciate you doing what you do. You've been really right. good. Given it's good to have a balance of Mammoth and Ocean County coaches. Yep. You know, you know, you're connected. You you know different connections than I do, and yeah. vice versa. Uh, I you, agree. You've been in the parochial. 
um, you know, I, I'm with the public. Yeah. Um, but we both have the same purpose. We want to make sure that the short conference gets covered the right way. And, and, and again, I think the, uh, Coach Antonucci being on tonight, us doing our friendly banter that we always do. We, I think the great thing on tonight's show is when you gave the kids the 10 rules that you really want to become a better high school person, more importantly, become a better young man to go through that little checklist that you had up there. That's it. That's, that was a great job by you to put that up there with the kids to show you that this is, and always will be about the kids. Coach, you know, I'm going to tell you something. A kid knows what's right or wrong. Yeah. A kid knows what's right or wrong. It's just that he's got to condition himself to be right all the time. And discipline himself, yeah. And discipline yourself. It really is. I don't have yep. a lot of rules. My rules basically are if you have to think twice about something, then don't do it. You probably don't do it. Then exactly don't do right. It. Then don't do it. And that, it's real simple. It's not yep. a lot of rules. Think twice, yep. don't do it. But there's nothing wrong. There's not a limit of how many great things you could do in a day. So then why would you stop? Yep. I love when people go, oh, I was good. I did this. And you stopped? Yeah. When you're consciously not doing anything positive, you're actually being bad to me. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And I, I visually you want to make sure that people are doing the right things on your football field. And as reporters, we want to see guys because we'll go to games. We see the names the, and now we see the faces and then we see the body language or the body language, whatever it or is. The lack, or the lack thereof, you know. And then, and then, and then, when we start picking all-star teams, yeah, um, you know, you can vouch he's a really high-flying guy, and yeah. whoa, he was motivated. And yet, you look at it; he had two catches for twenty-two yards, and you're yeah. coming across like he was the greatest guy in the world. Yeah, so, and 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 college coaches like to see game films. You know why? And coach, I never in all they my years. They don't want to see highlights, and they don't want to see cutups. They want to see film. I don't do that. I, I've always told the coach, coaches want to see game film and this and that. And I would tell a coach, why? You want to look for something negative or do you want to see yeah. something positive? He goes, well, I want to yeah. see something positive. Well, then watch his highlight video because he did it. Yeah. But when yeah. you watch the game film, they're going to see you maybe walk into the line or maybe yeah. body language, all that stuff. It's tough. So the longer the film's on, they can catch you if they want to in some, yeah. in a bad in a bad light. So yeah. us coaches and players got to be conscious of, you know, correcting those things. Right. Agreed. All right. You good. So we're done. Um, good, my friend. Awesome. Talk to you again as always. Yeah. And uh, excited to talk next week and get things going and we'll clear out the playoff box. I got to try to make a run on the top dog. Who's up by, by, by three games on me there. Yeah. You're going to try to go is it, is it three? You got three on me. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm picking the games right now, this is what you need to do. You need to look to see what I'm doing. All right? And that's that. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm on a roll. Anything I touch is gold. Now, I probably jinx myself, right? But we will post our picks on Friday morning. I know all, all our coaches out there love to see it, even though they love to tell us that we saw that you picked the other team. But that's fine. Hey. In our profession, if 50% love you, you did your job. I will be honest, though. I, I'm joking about the picks when you're touching things that turn to gold. But obviously, sure, football report, you know, dot com, that's turned to gold. And I'm, I'm honored and humbled to be a part of it, bud. All right. Wishing you the best, Coach. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, Bye -bye. guys.